You know, that home mushroom cultivation community is at the beginning of a radical influx of people curious to explore the medicinal properties of mushrooms. Whether you're a novice or a seasoned pro, the Michael Geeky podcast has become your guide to understanding the pulse of the at-home mushroom cultivation community. Many new growers are finding healing and purpose within the community and garnering attention rapidly. Join us as we sit down with one such new grower who's doing it right and discuss the dynamics, challenges, and triumphs of his newfound passion. We delve into the heart of how this community is evolving and attempt to find balance between the old guard and the new blood. How will we find balance as this tidal wave of interested people join the community and rapidly become competent growers and vendors? Don't go anywhere as we discuss this dichotomy with the one and only Dichotomous Keys. You're listening to the Michael Geeky Podcast. A podcast that inspires people to grow mushrooms at home to improve their mental, emotional, and physical health. Most people call him geeky, and he is a passionate mushroom cultivator, advocate, and educator. Every week, he sits down with fellow cultivators, mushroom educators, scientists, and therapists to discuss the various ways people can approach mushroom cultivation and how mushrooms can be used to improve their lives. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Myco Geeky Podcast, the podcast that goes deep so you can level up your at-home mushroom cultivation game. I'm your host, Myco Geeky, and we got a great show tonight. I finally got a chance to uh, twist uh, somebody's arm. I, I've been slowly just putting, you know, putting the feelers out there, trying to, trying to see if we couldn't get him on the show. And uh, finally, I guess I said the right things. The stars aligned, whatever you want to call it, and uh, we got him on. So we're going to be talking to Dichotomous Keys uh, in just a minute. But first, let's do what we always do. We're going to thank the Discord mods. Uh, and I swear to God, one of these days, I'm going to get some of them on the show. Uh, it, it will happen. I, I promise you. I have, I mean, these guys, they can all grow. They all know what's up. They run a mean server. Nothing, you know, people act right and stay focused. It's, it's wonderful. So I love you guys. Uh, really appreciate everything that you guys do. Uh, also, uh, my Patreon supporters. I, I got a bunch of you guys. You guys are great. You guys are helping me out. We're going to do something special for you guys on uh, Christmas coming up here. Uh, so expect a, a message coming up here this week. Um, we're going to get a few things going here for you guys. So anyway, we're also going to be moving some content, uh, some of the demonetized content uh, from YouTube over to Patreon. Uh, trying to you know we want to make a little scene over there a little bit so we're going to be doing some of that for those of you guys who don't know i am on patreon uh it's patreon.com backslash michael geeky not complicated at all please consider supporting the show i'd appreciate it uh a lot of content demonetized uh man i don't i there is no rhyme or reason anymore to uh this this demonetization i i i, I don't understand it stuff that has absolutely no reason to be demonetized is getting demonetized and other stuff where i didn't expect it to make it through is making it through um overall not, not doing so good as far as the monetization goes which is what keeps me going so since that that's not working out so well that's what the patreon's all about uh, but definitely trying to add some value for you for the patreon supporters uh, want to take care of you guys so stay tuned we're going to do a little something special for you um, also uh, so you know it's it, as as geeky's going about his day growing the mushrooms pouring agar looking in microscopes getting cool artwork from people what whatever i'm doing that day chit chatting with people um some people asking good questions, some people asking stupid questions. It's okay, guys. It's okay. If it's stupid, I'll tell you. Don't worry. If it's if it's smart, if it's an impressive question, I'll also tell you. Uh, but I happened upon somebody on Instagram recently, and uh, through a couple little peculiar posts, I was like, does this guy live by me? This guy, I think I know where this guy's at. So I reached out to him, and, and sure enough, he doesn't live too far away from me. Um, so we got together. He's a local uh, gourmet mushroom farmer uh, on Instagram. His uh, IG account is the Spore Store. 
And so I got to see his, his commercial mushroom farm, uh, all that stuff. And one of his products that he makes, uh, I, I was, he had been drinking it. He let me try it. I was like, okay, I got to buy some of that stuff. So anyway, this is not a paid promotion. This right here is my new favorite drink, uh, Spore Spark. It is, uh, he uses extracts from roasted barley, rye, chicory root, dandelion, and then powdered extracts of cordyceps, militaris, and lion's mane. Um, it's a tasty drink. Um, I've also used uh, Leroy McGibbons. Um, Chaivana is also a tasty uh, chai drink. Um, but man, like day to day, I'm, I'm enjoying the spore spark. I definitely love supporting somebody that, that, you know, is more or less a neighbor of mine. Um, so anyway, uh, if you guys want, want to try out some morning coffee, the spore spark, uh, I say, give it a try, support this guy. Cause I want, I want him to keep doing what he's doing so I can go see what he's doing. Cause geeky likes looking at mushrooms anyway. All right, guys. So what else we got going on? Oh yeah. You guys keep asking about the, the mutant grow along patience, Mickey, uh, Mickey mutants. He's, you know, he's pulling out all the prime cuts. He's trying to make sure everything's perfect. And in the scroll along is going to be spectacular. Uh, that's all going to get coordinated and lined up and be ready to go first full week in December. So stay tuned. I will announce it here on the show. I will announce it on my social medias. If you guys are in any way connected to what I'm all about and what I'm doing, you guys will know when the time is right. So stay tuned very soon. We're, we're getting real close. All right. Did I hit all the boxes? I think I did. Okay. So let me tell you a little bit about this guy. I, he hit my radar, radar really similar, uh, similar time to when natural state mycology did and uh friendly guy nice guy and uh it's for me i'm gonna just tell you guys right now i see through all you guys i can tell right away if you genuinely love growing mushrooms and i can tell if you're here for the almighty dollar i ain't mad at you if you're here for the almighty dollar but i'm all about the people who are here because they truly love growing mushrooms and that's what they're what they're really all about so that was this guy and much like natural state mycology, this guy has just consistently impressed me. He is a really good grower. I would say he's a natural talent. He, um, and most importantly, is a good guy. So anyway, let's welcome to the show, none other than Dichotomous Keys. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Thanks for having me on. Hi, right, man. Thanks for being here. It took a minute, but we, we made it happen. It's all good. Yeah, no hurries. Just I'm thrilled that you had me on. It is uh it didn't take a minute for me. I'm amazed that I'm even here. So yeah. Well, so let me just like I said with natural state, I said, look, man, it's so easy. <laughs> All you gotta do is pay attention and actually be willing to do the work. Yeah. It's not work to me. That's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do, I do think you got some, I, you got some special skill sets, um, that, that that's making things go a little bit smoother for you. But anyway, um, let's, let's do this. So, so your home base is on Facebook, right? Yeah. That's mostly where I'm posting at the moment. Okay. Um, I don't know if you want me shouting out groups or whatever, but yeah, that's... you can, yeah. Shout out some groups. Do it. Yeah. So mainly I post at Mycotech labs on Facebook. I mean, of course that, you can find me on my that's, homepage. That's broccoli's right. Right. Broccoli yep. and okay. uh, Ryan and uh, yep. Yep. So I post there a lot. And then, so that's our cultivation kind of oriented group. There's no yep. sales there. Nobody's pushing anything on you or trying to sell you anything. Anybody new experienced, whatever can come there and, and talk about cultivation and you, you know, whatever that's, and then for sales I, or whatever, if people are interested in something I have or whatever, um, I post a lot at the genetics house, which is James Cruz's. Shout uh, out to James Cruz. Yeah, man, he's been super helpful to me. I mean, very encouraging. Like you, you know, saw me early and and helped me, guided me, helped me stay away from a lot of the pitfalls. Right. Um. Yeah, he's been really helpful to me. Brock has too. There's a, a lot of people have. You know, you Ed. A lot of a lot of a lot of people have helped me get where I'm at. I did not Good. do it on my. Own. We don't get anywhere on our own. We just yeah. don't, man. I just saw this uh, funny little meme 
It was this guy doing stand up and, and I guess he was doing a little crowd work with some kids, some 24 year old kid. And he was like, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm in real estate. I have my own development firm. And he's like saying all this impressive stuff. And the comedian's like, wow, at 24. Wow. You, you doing all that at 24. And he's like, what does your dad do? <laughs> and the guy goes, uh, he's in real estate. And he goes, oh, does he? does he work for you at your development firm? And he goes, uh, well, it's my dad's firm. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Stop, stop acting like you're doing it all on your own. I think that's yeah. a great lesson in general for all these growers. If you got something amazing from somebody, don't forget where you got it from. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's yeah, all you got to do, man. If I, yeah. it, 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 let, let's say I, I got, here you go. Here's new geeky's green ghost. I'm selling it. Everybody's growing it. They love it. And then all of a sudden somebody decides it's not going to be called that anymore. Yeah. That's not right. People that's do that. But it, yeah. No, that's lame. Yeah. Come up with your own things. If you want to name it, it's not that hard to do. Yeah. So I got to do. Yep. Anyway. So, okay, cool. So you're hanging out, uh, Mycotex, uh, genetic house, um, solid yeah groups. and i posted a lot of the other groups i mean here and there there's a lot of groups i'm in those are just the primary ones i uh, i'll post almost everything i grow at those and then you know i'll post other things at appropriate sites if i've got some of wombats i'll post it at wombat labs i'm growing some tat i'll post it at tat you know things like that so wow what a novel idea yeah. well to actually you know. to i mean this is why i like you because you do the right things that makes sense right you're like you're paying homage you're showing respect you're you're not trying to hide in the shadows and sneak up i just talked to uh i won't i won't say who i talked to somebody who has been on the show and they were telling me about how somebody was just ooing and on over something they had and they wanted it and they sent it to them for free right and 24 hours later they had a post of their transfer plate saying <laughs> this is my such and such 25 bucks a plate dm yeah. me that shit pisses me off and i'm just that's like, not right i see people doing it i see i know there are people who are notorious for doing that they're the culture vultures or whatever nothing you, call you them. can do about it yeah they buy nothing your plate you and throw it in a jar lc and but i tell you what the ones that want it for free that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Or they're not going to do anything with it or they're never going to say thank you. So you know what? If somebody isn't willing to pay for it, hesitate to, I mean, I don't know. I, I used to give away so much stuff. I, I would pay for shipping and then you just never hear from these people again until they need more cultures from you. Yeah. You're that's like, the problem. Oh, I'm, I'm sending out free stuff. And... They're the least appreciative. People don't appreciate something if they don't pay for it. It's sad that it's that way, but. Yeah, man, it's like pizza, right? If you go to some bougie ass pizza place and, and the waiter comes to take your order, you're like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like this, uh, artisanal, uh, gourmet, uh, deep dish, uh, Chicago style, um, Philly golden cheese steak, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, can, and can I get that without, I actually don't want the onions and can you like slightly, you know what I mean? Like people are so neurotic yeah. about ordering, but if you're at work and they're like, oh, there's free pizza in the break room. Man, I could have a big yeah, all portion of, picky. Of, and <laughs> all of a sudden free ain't picky. You just go yeah. in there, you just yeah. free, free, take, take, no one cares. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's how we that are. Works. That's what we do. If we're paying for it now, it's oh well, okay. I kind of like this culture, but man. Yeah, I don't understand the selling selling stuff before you've grown it or number one, I want to grow it anyway. I want to see what it'll do. I don't and what if they sent you the wrong thing? You happens don't even know what time. you have. Happens yeah. all the time. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. I couldn't sleep at night. I'd be too worried about the emails I was going to get the next day or whatever. I just, yeah. I worry about things that I've had enough of my own things that I've grown 10 times and sometimes the tub just looks different or whatever. Right. I'm not guaranteeing some other thing that I haven't even seen yet. Well, because I, I don't you're... You, you have a moral code. Yeah. I don't you like getting yelled at. And I don't you, like unhappy people. And yeah. Yeah. And I want to be just, an honest, decent guy. Golden rule, man. Just do for other people what you 
want him to do for you, right? So you yeah, got a exactly. buddy. Let's say your buddy's with Tim Pig, and he's gonna, uh, you know, he's like, check this out, man. I got this thing. I think I'm gonna call it Toke. It looks really cool. Oh, cool, man. I like that. You should send that to me. I'll grow it out for you. Oh, cool. And then you, and then all of a sudden you start selling it. Yeah. Right. Like that's. Yeah. Is that cool? I don't know. I mean, I know, like, let's say I had something cool. I sent it to you, and then you said, hey, you don't mind if I sell it, do you? I mean, because you're my friend, I'm going to say, yeah, sure, that's right. fine. But I'm really going to be like, what have you done with it that I didn't do with it? You did, Have right. you done something special with it? Because otherwise, right. I'd prefer that you send people my way since I spent all the goddamn time and energy to That's do it. That's what I try to do. And I have people contact me all the time for things that they've seen that I'm, yeah. oh, man, you got, Toke is a fine one. I got a, I, yep. I work, got a nice example of that. And, yeah, I'm like, well, it's Tim's thing. I mean, you can hit him. So Here's every him time. Post. Yep. Yeah. Every time I post something cool. I uh, try not to post too much because I'm because I'm doing this whole thing now. But back wow. in the day, you know, people I I'd, I'd post something they they'd want it, and I'd be like, "Well, you know where to get it, right? You know, yeah, I told you who it came from. You already yeah. know. Go right. bug the oh, but what, uh, what to say? Five bucks, really? That's how people people. There's no tribal mentality anymore. Like, no. you got to take care of the tribe. Yeah, yeah, it does it's. Yeah, and I've had people tell me it's okay to, like, I mean, James Cruz, we talked about him. He's a fine example. He's told me multiple times, encouraged me to sell his things. He's like, man, it's good. I don't care. It gets it out there. Yeah. People will see it. They'll be interested. And I'm, I'm still, I'm like, man, just just hit him up, you know, because right. they're oftentimes people are hitting me for his things in his group. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, this is his house. I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna, yeah, I mean, just hit him up for but it. But now, so he, I know James well enough to say I'm pretty sure what he's doing is, if your grows looked crappier than his, he would say, yeah, yeah, you should probably send them my way. Right. But he, th he, he thinks what you're doing is pretty great. So he's like, cool. You, it's okay. You're doing something with it. This, and this is really, I think I feel the same way when somebody yeah. sends me something that I've sent them and it, it looks really good. I'm kind of like, yeah, dude, right. I'm impressed. Yeah, cool. me too. That's what I want. And I want people to have good results and show them yeah. often. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Well, let's do what we always do. We got to do the Michael origin story. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> first mushroom memory. First mushroom, any mushroom or psychedelic? It could be, yeah, any mushroom. Everybody always assumes it's got to be psychedelic. I definitely want to know that story, but I, I, My I first I, thing I first can remember mushroom memory. First mushroom memories wasn't even a live mushroom. I've got a book that my dad had on his bookshelf when I remember I was very young, uh, preteens, whatever, looking through that book and look, I've still got it. It's actually, I use it to prop up my flow hood right now. Um, just kind of ironically, but anyway, so I, yeah, I remember an Amanita was the cover photo and I remember, you know, paging through it. We didn't have the internet and all back then. So just looking at the pictures and being interested and then from there, I guess for the magic mushrooms as a teenager. So back in the uh, probably mid eighties, I guess. Okay. Uh, my uncle had cow pastures. Um, and you know, I had heard about them. I knew, uh, I had a little bit of, uh, introduction into psychedelics from some other substances or whatever. And. So yeah, I was interested. Uh, people told me a basic description, you know, look for the brown mushrooms that kind of fade out to whitish on the edge and a purple ring and the, you know, purple spores, purple black spores. And you know, the, the general, I, I probably shouldn't have been going out and picking them eating because I didn't know what I was doing, but went to my uncle's cow pastures, found just tons of them, um, picked a bunch of them and didn't ate so way you, too many. That must've been like somewhat down South, I'm assuming. Oh yeah. Yeah. And in that, Alabama. That, yeah. Okay, coastal Alabama. Alabama. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so I was picking wild Alabamas in the 80s. Um, you know, a kid didn't know anything about any. I, I had been told, well, you can't overdose. And just some really stupid information, no real accurate information about anything. So, yeah, I took the first time we had a garbage bag full of them. And we just boiled it down in a crawfish boiler until it was about like motor oil. And, wow. and yeah, I was told, well, you drink a glass of tea. So I didn't know to mix it with tea or Kool-Aid or anything. And I drank 
way too much and it was right. it was uh yeah it was a I, I i mean surprisingly i enjoyed it and even though it was super intense and way more than i should have done it didn't it didn't turn me off i was like wow okay that's and it enough. didn't kill you no no it didn't kill me didn't do any it physiological didn't damage it didn't really do any psychological damage or anything that i could tell i wouldn't advise anybody else to go do that i mean it was there's no need to do that much it was you know but but yeah so i did that and then oh uh, you know did them more and more did you know learned didn't do that much again right but uh learned you know different ways to we always just did the tea though we would just boil them and, and then i learned to water it down you know use a shot glass in a glass of lemonade or tea or something mm -hmm. um first time i tried to cultivate was around that time and it was not really what you call cultivation we just brought cow turds home that we you know had some pins and we knew had spore load on them and and piled them all up and watered them every day and got a few mushrooms but nothing you know you rip it off the ground it doesn't really have a way to get moisture anymore so i, didn't, didn't I work love right. imagining you guys just collecting cow patties oh yeah we bought a bunch Building of them of cow patties in the backyard sand, sand castles in the back <laughs> yep, and your exactly. little cow patty mountains yeah my buddy's yeah. uh mother that whose yard we had them in she was pretty savvy and she found them she was like okay i know what y'all are doing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah so, but yeah so you know we got a few that way but it was not worth the effort we were finding so many in the fields that there was no really reason to pursue right. cultivation at that time and then uh you know i did various things for several years and then really just kind of got too involved in other compounds and stuff like that and had a really strong experience on some tabs one night and decided to put everything down mm. for about 20 years i guess um and then i didn't hear anything about the being used for psychiatric issues or whatever but i was dealing with a lot of depression living in a uncomfortable situation whatever and uh probably i'm not good with dates i would guess it's early 2000 sometime around in there okay and decided i wanted to um just for whatever reason they called to me i don't know i, I didn't know that you could use them for depression I didn't, I was just unhappy and thought, man, I remember feeling so in touch with the universe and, and, and just everything seemed, seemed, you know, I wanted to have that experience again. Right. So, uh, I started looking into that and got on the shroomery and. So now what tried. year is this? What the, this yeah. would have been, I, you know, I'm not great on dates. I would have, I'm thinking it was probably, was it, I don't know, mid, probably early 2000, 2010, maybe 2000. Okay. Maybe a little later than that. I think I moved to Selma in 2013. So it would have been after that. So okay. yeah, maybe 2015, 2016, something like that. Okay. Um, bought four syringes from uh, Sporeworks and, you know, some pre sterilized grain bags from somebody. And they sent me some PF tape cakes uh, in the jars for free with my grain bag purchase. Wow. And then the, the general information I was getting from Shroomery at that time. You know, with the, I just injected my spores in the grain, wait for them to colonize. I don't know, I think I had eight or 10 bags, maybe one or two of them made it to colonization. And I put those in big 60 quart tubs with a whole brick worth of substrate with like two pounds of grain. And then, you know, polyfill in the holes and misting and fanning and misting and fanning and misting and fanning before it was even colonized. So it turned into a big old soggy mess. Right. And I got some mushrooms, not many but a few, I got a few penis envy and I think some Arissa Indias, but the PF cake cakes, the PF tech cakes by far did the best. I got mushrooms out of those uh, more than one flush. So I had enough to do and, and did some of those and really didn't, I got interested in, when I, mean, I was interested in cultivation at that time, just for the interest in doing it, but I had such poor luck and there, I didn't see a lot of information that lead, led me to believe that I was going to have much better luck. Right. So I, you know, I got my little batch and that was enough and, and, and used those and kind of forgot about it again for a while and then got back into it recently, just, um, because of the depression, I had went through some really serious depression and then started, uh, you know, seeing the recent information on the internet and whatnot about how it could help with that. My psychiatrist actually recommended it even here Wait, in Alabama, What? you know, yeah, wow. shocking. Uh, she's been really cool. She's sent me to ketamine therapy and all kinds. I mean, she's totally open to it. I haven't, 
I haven't had the, the, I think it's a whole revolution. I think that the the psychiatrists, the medical people in that field, under, like they're, they're they see the writing on the wall. They realize yeah. that oh, oh, that's not really here. So anyway, um, pursued it again, and I did. I started watching YouTube uh, to try to learn this time, and saw you know some of the basic stuff you get when you're new and you're just starting to search and you don't really know what to look at, and tried Uncle Ben's tech. Um, did the same thing, bought spores, syringes, tried Uncle Ben. I didn't know you could get plates and LC and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, tried that, um, had limited luck, got very frustrated once again, um, was just like, man, I got it. There's gotta be a better way and started doing more research and thought, oh, there is a better way. Talked to a few, you know, went and bought a flow hood, watching your podcast and listening to Ed and other people and figured out what to do. Bought a pressure cooker, bought a flow hood. And you did yeah, all the things, man. Yeah, everything turned around. All of a sudden, yeah. I couldn't have any shitty luck. Yeah. That's so great. Instead of one in 10 succeeding, maybe one in 10 failed. And then I've gotten a little better with that. And so, yeah, now I'm having much better results. And That's great. Uh, and, yeah, there's so much more information available now between, like, your podcast and other, you know, Ed and all these people that are just tell you how to do everything from not just growing them, but if you want to breed them, everything. So, okay. and, I'll, and all the I'll fun out of it. Hole yeah we're taking all, all the fun out of it yeah now it's just we're just handing you the keys to the kingdom how yep. dare us all the gatekeepers are so pissed <laughs> off well you know and i look I'm at I, this is what i say to all of them there are just too many people with serious mental health issues that i truly believe this medicine can potentially yeah. help that it definitely I, helped me. I think that is more important than gatekeeping, sitting on some little private bit of information. Any bit of information we can get out there to help people grow and have success and enjoy the process so that they can grow their own medicine, that's what I'm all about. Yeah, I don't understand the gatekeeping anyway. I think that's just the wrong way to look at it. I don't, I don't think excluding people from something that you want to be a part of, that, that doesn't make sense to me. The more the merrier, the rising tide raises all well-maintained ships, all that kind of yeah. thing. You know, so I don't, it's, a it's easy for me to say being a new guy and being one of the people who benefited from the gates being kicked open. I get that. Um, but man, the info's out there. Quit worrying about it and be a part of what's happening at the, now. At this stop, point, stop worrying about trying to hold it back. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. The exactly. dam's broke, guys. Yep. Sorry. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's yep. cool. So, so, okay. You kind of, that's an interesting, that's maybe a new story I haven't heard which is, it was hard back then. <laughs> and oh, man. If, if you couldn't yeah. just find them and you didn't have an uncle with a cow pasture. Yeah, you know, I don't know where you'd have got them. You, I mean, you, if I didn't have access, I was everybody's friend back then because I had my uncle. Yeah, I mean, right. it was, if you didn't know somebody who could go collect them wild, you just didn't have them. Exactly, yeah. So now- I'm sure there were people growing them, but it now wasn't you got, a big I, thing. I'm looking behind you. I see the flow hood. You just <laughs> yeah. you got more plates back there than me. I I, I wrapped but a few of them tonight, it. but yeah, I still got a couple. I gotta when when this is done, we're gonna be wrapping some more plates. Um, yeah, that that over there is my stack of that's the things that absolutely have to be dealt with really soon. Yeah, you know, multi spore plates and things. I need. To, yeah, I've got. Yeah, it's overwhelming, but I love that, it. That it's agar, great. I'm that's my favorite. It, uh, truly, yeah. the agar game is my my favorite part. That's it opens up the whole world. I mean, without if, yeah. If, if yeah, anybody, I would encourage if you're interested. Sure, the LC into a bag is a lot easier than the old way. You can get some mushrooms, um, you know, whatever. But if you're if man, it's so much more fun if you really get into it and start working agar. That's just the that's the keys to the whole kingdom. Especially if you're you know germ germ plates. If you're working with you know multi spore syringes on a plate or you're you know swabbing plates grabbing dragon plates whatever however you're germinating yeah, your plates whatever. the agar game is fun it it's is definitely fun. and if you're going to try to send multi-spores to get you know phenotypical selections or whatever from yeah agars i mean squirting multi-spores into a bag is just such a crap shoot at least yeah. if you if you got them on a plate and there's a little tiny speck of bacteria or yeast and just cut that piece out and yeah. leave it and you still got your multi-spore. Yeah. But yeah. Just, now, now have so you heard, easier. um, Ed was telling me, uh, so once you got monocarions or even if you have, uh, uh, one monocarion and a, and a dicarion and you want to do a diamond pairing, 
<clears throat> he was like, oh yeah, he's like, I don't even throw them in. I don't even do it on the plate anymore. I right. just throw them in the bag and let them figure it all out. Yeah, he, and it saves you a lot of plates, I bet. It saves you plates. You're going to yep. get fruit no matter what. Hopefully yeah, it's exactly. going to be a cross. It might not, but if it's not, at least you still got some fruit. So right. you know, I was like, wow, <clears throat> that is another way to look at it. I did not. Yeah, and the way he's doing it with the diamonds, I think he's usually using the blobs. So you're going to know which one's which, you know, pretty easy to see. Well, there's my blob that I carry on and here's the new fruit. <laughs> that's, yeah. yeah, that's, that's the new thing. Yeah. If so. you're pairing rusty white with Enigma. Yeah. And you don't get rusty white or Enigma, then you're cross worked. Like, right. let's not act like this is, this is rocket science. Right. You know, does it hold up in, in a, a pH? The thesis probably not but does it work yeah that's not doing? what i'm interested in so that's okay 100 percent. yeah so okay that's cool so you you i never hate hearing the stories about people who watch the show found all the good youtube videos to watch and actually did those things i mean dude yeah it took it, a minute to sort out you know which what angle to follow or whatever and there's a lot of content on youtube oh yeah and there's a lot of content on facebook and there's a lot of people that are adamant about recommending things that they probably haven't even tried or done or whatever but man or they had it one time and it worked and and it, it may work i don't know but yeah i tried a lot of the stuff and and i got so i mean i almost quit there were some people that really talked me off the ledge i was real depressed i was in a really bad place and I was like, man, I did this to, to stop my depression, not to make it worse. This is like, ah, everything's turning green. And, oh. and yeah, BC and some other guys. And they were like, man, just, you've done the right things. You got your hood. You got to just wait. It's going to get better. And they were right. like, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, that's why, um, you, there's a lot of people in the community that just say, you got to do it this way from the beginning. You got to get a still air box. Like there are some that say you have to learn your sterile technique through a still air box. You have to do this. You have to buy a yeah. pressure cooker. You have to do that. And I'm always like, man, let's, you know, if it's, if it's no fun out of the gate, most of these motherfuckers who are doing it like that, they did it because they want to make some coin out of the game. Yeah, yeah. So they're willing to struggle for a while because they right. see that they got their eye on the prize. That's not what all these people are doing. Right. Some of these people want medicine. And right. most people just have to go, hey, doc, I would like some medicine. And then they get a prescription. They go get their medicine. And now we got these people having to grow this shit. And so I say buy a bag of grain spawn, buy a bag of substrate, mix them together, get some fruit come back tell me if you still want to learn how to grow mushrooms exactly that's what i would recommend <laughs> have a do you know whatever you're you know to get some good advice and, and have yeah if you can just get some success then you'll yeah. know like if, once you see those first mushrooms grow and you then you experience them and you're gonna like you're either gonna be hooked and if you're not hooked yeah. man maybe it's not your you don't maybe you don't yes. want to spend all the money and get on all the equipment and do all that but when you get your you're hooked you're hooked man you'll know like, yeah, I, like well, my first mushrooms, I was like, all right, this is for me. I yes. like this. This is like everything about it is so rewarding. And honestly, I think maybe I'm a little, I don't, I wouldn't at the time, but I don't know that I'd go back and give up my failures because they made it so much more satisfactory when I finally had success. I finally felt like, man, I accomplished something and the a brighter day is dawning and I'm not going to be a failure anymore. And, and right. you know, so that was a part of the whole process i don't think it's just the medicine for me with the depression i think a lot of it was the cultivation making friends having a community to communicate with that is interested in the same things as me and just yeah you know all that's part of it yeah i mean it, it works like 12 step it kind of works like yeah like a yeah. 12 step program you meet people you you find out people we take care of each other um that feels good i mean the first time somebody offers to send you cultures it feels good they don't. you're like oh they like yeah to being on this podcast culture. feels good i mean it's yeah, like man right? I, 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 less than a year ago i remember watching these things and just thinking i mean i remember having silly maybe you know when i first started getting my good grows and having little fantasies about man i'll make a youtube channel one day and, and thinking at the time because i still had that defeatist mental attitude 
oh, that's stupid. Nobody's going to care about me or what I'm doing. And, you know, I mean, man, it's a whole new world now. Here I am on a podcast. It's like some of that stuff's actually happening. It's crazy. Well, you already know that's not true because I've seen your posts and I've seen who's commenting on it. And you're definitely getting a lot of attention, right? You're, yeah, you're, you're, no. you're doing some things right. You're doing some things right. Let's let's. I've made mistakes too. Right. I get scolded about things, and I'm learning. There's a learning the social media. That man, that was a new. Uh, that that's taken a yeah. lot of correction over time. Of what you can do, where and whose places you can post what oh, on. Oh man, Whitebeard was just talking about this exact same thing. He was like, "Yeah, man." He's like, you know. In one group, you can do X, Y, and Z, and in the in the other group, you can't do X, Y, and Z, but you can do yeah. PDQ, and it's like, okay, yeah. Yeah, you got to kind of figure it out. And That's why Geeky is not, man, everybody asks me to be in their group. I'm in just a couple. I'm in, like, Wombat Labs. I'm in Genetic House. I got kicked out of a couple I would have stayed in, but what, whatever. I, yeah, know, that's unfortunate. People make that's... their decisions. I don't really care. I ain't got time to worry about it. There, yeah, uh, I suspect there have been some people that have had their finger on the ban button on me for a few things, but I've been able to, as soon as somebody has a complaint, I immediately go to them and yeah. try to discuss it openly and honestly. Okay, what what did I do that, right. you know, I wasn't trying to do anything uh, spammy. I'm not handbook. trying to rip anybody off. Let me know what rules and, and, and clarify the rules that are not clear, and I will certainly obey the, you know, whatever. So I, I've been able to. All the people who have had problems with me, I think I've been able to smooth it out and they've understood eventually that, oh, he wasn't trying to be a dirtbag. He was just right. didn't know. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, I actually had not prepared this question, but I, it just popped in my head. <laughs> Dichotomous keys. How'd you come up with the name? I mean, I get it. And it's cool. right. I like it. A little it, embarrassing, but... honestly. Um, Let's hear it. I heard Ed or and you and Ed talking about the dichotomous keys and just thought, well, I you know I was looking for a Myco name, everything's uh -huh. taken. I was like, well, it's not taken. It's kind of cool. So, I mean, I heard y'all talking about it. Honestly, I didn't really know. I understood some very, you know, roughly what it was. But so I went and got on. I like it. Wikipedia man. and a few places looked it up, okay. looked at. So let me understand at least what it is if I'm going to use it for my identity or whatever. And I just thought it sounded cool and I liked. Once I read about it, I was like, okay, I, I, I get it. That's, yeah, you know, whatever. I need a name. Yeah. I'll go with that. It was just, just I like it. Yeah. It it, um, it's in the vein. Another one I really like, one of my friends on Instagram, um, she's a, uh, sh she's from Michigan. So I am, I'm from Michigan. So of course I like all my Michiganders, um, but she goes by Kiriagami Kate. And I just always thought, what just a cool, catchy name. Yeah. Um, but Dichotomous Keys, man. I, I'm like, man, that could, it could be like a band name. That could be yeah. a jazz band, the Dichotomous Keys. I, but my life has been quite a dichotomy, so it just kind of fit. I like there, it. There you go. I like yeah. that. All right. So next question. Let's start talking about um, what you like to work with right now. What, what right varieties, now. Um, well, how about we do this? What varieties, as you've in this most recent venture into successful mushroom cultivation, what varieties have really stood out to you? What ones, when you grew them, just just you know just caught your eye? You kind of developed a little love affair with them. Um, what what are near and dear to your heart strains? Right, so many. Um, but you got to have I like, think, okay, yeah, you're oh yeah, on I've an island, you can only have five. What are, Ooh, what man. are those five? I definitely have some gate stuff. Um, I like, I really like the, like the starfish. I like, I like a lot of, like, I like the emeralds. I've had a lot of neat things come out of, uh, I actually, before I even knew James that well, I got some emerald gate swabs from Ed and, and they got all kind of different albinos from them. And just, I really like them. So I really like, I like. I like thick stipes. I like gnarly stipes. Um, I like squatty stuff. I like squat knots a lot. I like stuff like that. Um, any kind of really just gnarly, weird looking, unusual things. They don't have to be albino. They don't have to be pigmented. Um, uh, but that's, I guess, mainly that's kind of what I'm focused on now. I'm trying to find things like that and then pull monos from them and see what I can do crossing them to other things and, and just see. 
that's kind of where I'm at now. First, my I began by just buying everybody's everything, anything. It caught my eyes, like you talked about the Pokemon cards or yeah, whatever. Just gotta get just that. Had to have something, you know. I had to have all of them and and then grow them all out and then yeah, just pick the ones I like that, that for whatever reason. Um, generally, I like stuff that's bigger mushrooms. I like some of the small ones too, but I like big thick stipes and you know I don't know why, but they're not the best commercially. People don't like a big giant mushroom in a bag dried, they but don't. I like the way they look. Um, I like the, I like the gnarly stipes. Yeah. I like those. That's one like of my the favorite. Knurled or gnarly, yeah. whatever you, however you want yeah. to describe them, especially towards the, 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 the top as it approaches the cap. I, yeah. I, I love really that. Like that. That's why I like a lot of the gate stuff. Cause it has yeah. that in general. Yeah. So I like that. And then, yeah, and that's so anything like that is pretty much my favorite kinds of things. And I've got a few exotics that I'm running, but um, mostly stuff that can be fruited without any super crazy, you know, techniques or anything. So like subtrops, tamps, um, things like that. I, I've got some pans, but I haven't grown them yet because I'm, I need to do research on the whole no poo tech because I don't really want to play with turds and all that kind of stuff. You can do that. I got guys in my Discord. Yeah, I got a pants channel. They're definitely just hopping there. They're, they're guys doing it. Are they, you know, just the bonkers pin sets, you, you know, bonker flushes that, that Probably some not, of yeah. these, uh, you know, poo, poo grows are, are getting, no, is it enough? Oh yeah. It's, yeah, it, it can be done. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. I'll get to them. I've got some grass tree pans from, uh, CJ Spano on, Agger now, but I just haven't. Nice. One of the many things that I got to get around to. Lots of never, stuff happening. Never enough time in the day, that's for sure. Now I'm, enough. I'm with you. I'm kind of. I had somebody send me uh, some some garlic max. And, yeah, those are uh, cool looking. Squat knots, and man, I love all those little bulbous. Yeah, I like that. I like those. Yeah, cool. yeah. I like anything squat with a fat stipe, and yeah, you know, I like big calves too. I don't know. I like I like all of them, man. Really, I don't even have anything against basic cubes. I, I can I can yeah. look at a tub of golden teachers and be like, man, those are cool. You know, they remind me of the good old days when I was picking them off a of cow turd. So. I I got the itch again. I was uh, I'm growing a bunch of weird stuff right now, and uh, I forget somebody had a post, and I was like, God, I gotta just go back in the old library and just grab like I wanted to just grow like some stargazers or, or some yeah. basic golden teachers. Just yeah. I, yeah, it's I, fun I, to do a, a, just a basic cube every once in a while. Yeah. So. Now I like ODPE still remains one of my favorites. Um, I just like, it's like a little piece of fat chalk, right? Like it, it right. dries real nice. I like anything. What drives me crazy. I don't know. It's this weird OCD thing. I have anything that when it dries, it makes the cap really brittle. Yeah, that's and then sensor. and it just starts just breaking up. Powder. And it yeah, drives me crazy. So yeah. Yeah, I'll admit I like the ones, even though I'm not really doing anything with them. I like the ones that stay nice and solid, and that's why I like the thick stipes. You get that nice little chunk that you exactly. can, yeah, and it, you can, yeah, it doesn't all turn to powder. And yeah, they're just more appealing to look at, I guess. Yeah. All right, so you um, you talked a little bit about struggling for a while. So what um kind of walk us through your text now like for example like when people ask me i say i still i do all my grain in jars i find it's more consistent for the size grow that i do that works out well for me um i i i got a flow hood i definitely right. love working that i do a lot of agar work i don't do a lot of lc um i sterilize my sub so walk me through like what your general cultivation process is now that's got you where you're feeling happy yeah what i've settled on i guess is you know i've tried a bunch of different things i used jars for in the beginning um just because i didn't want to have to buy the bags and throw them away and all. i mean it's right. money you know uh but then i eventually got i my wrists are not great i've got some arthritis issues and stuff man banging the jars and shaking them really hurt uh so eventually i converted over to bags and but yeah so i've got the flow hood pcs um i pressure cook for a long time because i use about three pounds of grain in a bag so it's pretty dense and big so it takes a minute right. for the center to get up to temp so i usually go about three hours on my bags um, same and i've tried various grains and had just i started with tracker supply oats which aren't pretty 
There's lots of sticks and stuff in there, but I was having decent <laughs> results. Um, but I felt like, well, maybe I could do better. It's dirty. I don't like the way it looks. So I tried a different supplier. I tried wheat and Milo and a few other things and they had bugs in them. And man, I just had so much trouble that I'm back to oats now. So I use oats in a bag. Um, and I use a 27 quart tub and I've just kind of got it dialed to where the amount of grain in my bag works about right for that size tub. So I use, you know, one bag and, and, and use agar for everything. So generally if I get a new cultagen, it depends on if I get it from spore or on a plate. If I got a plate, I just grow it out and see what, you know, like it, I keep that. And then I take spores from it and run those on agar. So, you know, I love sending T zero plates. Uh, that's my thing. If I can, I like to take my own spores from, I get somebody's cut. So I have their example, their preferred, the actual creator's preferred phenotype. And then I take spores from that, run plates, three or four multi-spore plates and run tubs. And then I see what I get, pick the things I like from that, that get my own little, right. you know, my flavor of it. So I can feel like, Ooh, this is my little version of it. It's still their thing. I don't claim that it's mine. It's not dichotomous, whatever gates or something, but it's uh yeah you know it's yeah so i just kind of escapes yeah but yeah so that's what i do and 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 then i yeah i just uh spawn it i you know line my tubs and put it in there and mix it all together with about i use about i've measured my bags by volume so it's four 18 ounce cups of grain per bag which is i think roughly 2.25 quarts full quarts not micro quarts right. of grain in a 27 quart tub with about Four, maybe a hair over four quarts of sub, so not quite a two to one, roughly a two to one ratio. And I've had pretty good luck with that. Um, usually, if I have problems now, almost always it's bacteria. You know, some yep. bacterial spawn bag that I was like, yeah, maybe it's not too bad. I'll send it. And you know, I don't know, whatever. You grow some funky, wacky fruit sometimes, and then it turns green eventually. But still, get something sometimes. And the longer I grow them, the more I've gotten better at picking those ahead of time. And that's one of the hard things. I think when you start is, well, it's white. Is it, I don't know how many window liquors is too many window liquors or whatever, but eventually you figure it out. You like, well, there's always, every time it's this bad, it shoots, hits the bed. So I'm not going to send those anymore. Now, yeah. That's kind of my basic tech. Now. So a lot of people that run jars for grain, they do two break and shakes. I, I do two break and shakes. Right. Do you, how many break and shakes do you do with your bags? At least two, you you some, usually three. So I'll do one, you know, when it gets, I don't know, whatever. As soon as I can see kind of white, you know, spots that are uh, obviously it's, you know, at least maybe 25 to 30% colonized, I'll bust it up and shake it. And then usually it comes back pretty quick. You see, you know, a lot of spots everywhere. And then you, often I end up with maybe one or two little patches where it didn't get mixed in good and there's an uncolonized patch at the bottom of the bag or something. So I'll shake it up one more time when it gets like that. And if it looks good, then I'm good. The ones I'll send that, the ones that's 100% colonized, the ones that I'll hesitate on are the ones that recolonize. You know, they're 100% colonized, but they're still, you know, a lot of pressed up against the bag grains that aren't fully colonized. They're colonized, but one half of the grain's colonized, one right. isn't. Those make me a little nervous, so I'll reshake them. And if I think it's bacteria, that's what I do now. I, I'll, I'll shake it up and just keep reshaking it. And if it, if it bounces back two or three times You're from good. the 100% shake, I'm like, screw it, I'm sending it. And it, usually if it's really an issue with bacteria, by the time you've done that, you know, that 100% shake or whatever on it, if you do it, if you keep spreading that bacteria around over and over, it's going to get worse and worse. And those, right. I'm like, okay, that one's going in the trash. And, and I've also finally gotten to the point where, man, if it's got a, a sour fermented smell, oh, yeah, those are done. It's done. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't even mess with that. If it smells waste off, your it's time. Yep. I don't, I don't want to waste the sub. In the beginning, I was, I had a different I tried. I, yeah. I was like, man, I want to see, because whatever, who cares if it fails? You know, I, a little bit of substrate's not that much money. And that's the way I looked at it. I can afford the substrate. So who cares? And then I started, you know, I mean, yeah, I would get fruit, but you get contamination too. And then all of a sudden I started getting more and more contaminated. I figured, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm getting fruits, but I'm also loading my environment up with spores of things I don't want in my environment. Exactly. And I'm just not going to do that anymore. So now as soon as it looks iffy, I'm, it's out the door. I'm not, I'm not saving a tub that's going green and trying to put 
pluck fruits out of it for later or whatever. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm also, I will, unless I really want to see this fruit and maybe this is going to be my one chance to see it for a while because I got other stuff going on. If I open that jar up and, and it's kind of like a neutral smell where I'm not yeah. really quite, it's not that great mycelium, earthy mushroom yeah, smell. Those weird ones that don't smell like anything. That are neutral. Yeah. Those are also yeah, those aren't probably good. a waste of time. Yeah. But I, I have run them a few times in every case. You know, they just don't. The thing I'm starting to realize that it's, it's a, a, a timing thing. Things really, if they're not progressing the way they should, yeah, it's not going to turn out great. Yeah, I've had those tubs that sit there and just won't pin. It looks yeah. fine. It's all white and you know, colonized. Looks great. And then you get a couple pins, and, you th and then or they just form in one side of the tub or something. Yeah, yeah I'm like yeah, but that one's going to shit the bed. <laughs> you it's, know. it's like uh, hen of the woods. You ever see these hen of the woods out out in the in the woods? Right. Um, sometimes the cluster will be small. Sometimes it'll be thirty freaking pounds. Right. And they really seem to like everything has to conspire perfectly to have them just keep blossoming and, and get huge. Right. And if any little change in in the the customary weather patterns stifles that. You know, like, let's say it's been raining and misting and everything's perfect. It's growing, but then it dries out and it gets hot. Yeah. And then it rains again. It won't pause and then keep going. It's done. You like yeah. threw it. Yeah. Off. Yeah. And, and I've had that happen. Just uh, opening tubs up too much and everything just yeah. just craps out. You know, it, it is definitely a balance between too wet and things yeah. taking forever. I get a lot of people who start trying bags and I go, you truly can spawn to bulk and ignore those fucking bags forever. But it might take a while because it yeah. take a minute to, to start that evaporative process to really get down to where, you know, it, it's, it's starting to dry out, which is triggering all, all the primordia and, and all the hyphal knotting and all that kind of stuff where the little dub tubs they do it perfectly they're getting plenty of air that stuff keeps going um right. but the bags they they'll hold on to that moisture a little bit that's why you can never now the oh, so i was going to tell you i started trying ed's little uh where you you at first i boiled the substrate right i can't that's a hot mess man i can't yeah I cannot do that good good on ed for doing that I yeah god bless him for that man that's a lot of ringing out substrate well no so for me it was the boiling and i couldn't do it, it was just too messy then you yeah start to cool yeah it down now i i have been lately trying to super saturate my substrate so do like three extra cups or an extra right. board or something like that so there's like a layer of water on the top Hmm. And I'm doing that because, man, the part I hated the most, I was so meticulous about getting my fuel capacity just right. And I'd hate just like overshooting one thing or the other. So I'd either have to crumble up and add more um, cocoa or, I'd, you, you know what I'm saying? Like just trying to yeah. get the balancing act trying to adjust right. It. Yeah. And I got sick of that. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to try Ed's way. Let's, uh, so I'm just going to super just hand saturate squeeze it. it. Hand squeeze it. That's working good. But what I'm finding is no matter how brutally I'm squeezing this stuff, you're either doing a teeny tiny little ball and then I feel like I can get it down to like one drop, right. two drops. Right. But when you're doing the bigger balls, cause you get sick of just making these little wadded balls, it gets, yeah. Really so they're a little bit wetter. So I've done a, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 bags and this way, and they're just taking a little bit longer. So I'm like, okay, now I gotta, I gotta figure out how can I, I cause I kind of like this approach. I, I, I think things are, there's benefits to it. Things yeah. are even all that stuff. Yeah. If you're squeezing every bit of it, you're, you're gonna have a lot more consistent result probably. Yeah. So That's I do it in a like big that. ice chest. Um, I've got, yep. I don't know a lot of tubs. So I've got two 102 quart ice chests. I do five bricks at a time. And it's almost my mix is generally, and I do it one or two ways. And kind of what I'm doing most often now is mixing it a little wet 
and then I add vermiculite after I'm done until it adjusts, you know, adjusts gotcha. to the proper field capacity. And then you got to, every time I use it, I have to get in there and roll it over because the moisture yeah. wants to settle to yeah. the bottom. So you got to be careful to do that. Um, but it just helps me with, you know, having enough ready to keep it in rotation, to, to have enough yeah. to do all the tubs or whatever. To, That's why to, I like doing the Edsway now. And I sterilize all my stuff, yeah. right? So, so I don't care anyway. But it's just sitting there ready to go whenever I yeah. want my little snowballs. I, I or dirt Yeah, you just use what you need. Yeah, yeah. that's the same as me. That's all I like to have it ready so that, so yeah, I just keep a bunch of it ready. And and then it's, you know, sitting there good to go when I am when I need it. And I've got the other one, the other ice chest. When I want to empty one, I start five new bricks. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just pour, I me measure everything out. I weigh my bricks to the appropriate weight. Um, and, and use you know measure my vermiculite out and measure my water out and then boil it pour it in the ice chest and it, i measured it with a meat thermometer to make sure it was sterilizing because i had problems in the beginning and i wasn't sure that the whole bucket tech was getting it really sterile and it wasn't holding it to temp long enough and and the ice chest did for me it, it, the one i'm exactly. using is holding it at above 190 degrees for hours so it's it's the issue it takes four it? days to cool down yeah yeah, yeah. If so you literally pour boiling water in there, you can come back 24 hours later and it's still steaming hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It That's literally crazy. takes about, it takes probably a, it takes over 18 hours to get below sterilization temp into pasteurization temp. Yeah. Then it holds it at pasteurization temp for another, you know, so it's, I don't know if it's yeah. going to get any more sterile. It's, it's, yeah. Until I open it up and start dipping some out, but I'm careful about that. And it's, I've done for, you know, it's had, reasonable results so far so it gets a lot done at one time it works for me but i do have to i still have to adjust it every time it's never i don't care if i weigh exactly gram for gram the water the vermiculite the it's still not gonna it, it's just not the same every time you gotta yeah. adjust it sometimes it's a little too wet sometimes a little too dry and that's what was driving me crazy was that part yeah, so you just that, hand that part drives it. me crazy, and then I'm also neurotic. So I'm like, okay, so I got to add a little bit in. I got to mix it up again, and then now I also got to sit on it for a while. Yeah, let I it so, make sure. Let it so absorb. I'm like, after. Yeah. yeah, that's why I do a big batch. So I, because it is a pain in the ass every time I have it to is. go through that adjustment. Yeah. I have to wait for it to cool, then I have to adjust the the field capacity, and I got to wait for that vermiculite to, or cocoa, whatever you added, to absorb it to actually absorb it. And then reach so it is a big pain in the ass right. but then once it's done i have enough for you know 20 tubs or whatever right so. i need to just get one of them cement mixers so yeah it'd be nice there. would it i think that's that's how i would do it if i had the space i don't got i i running out of space down here yeah that and happens really quick fun. i'm single and lit, have my own house all to myself i can't imagine with a wife and kids and all that man that's a yeah i'm i'm lucky to be unlucky in that way i guess it is uh oh your grass is always <laughs> greener on the other side it is yeah i mean i've chosen to be single so i can't yeah. say that it's yeah. yeah the um yeah the basement magically um you know back in the day that was that was the dad's zone yeah, right. it's your man cave. Not now, nope, nope. No, we we got the treadmill down here. It's shared, the, shared territory kid, now. Kids got a toy room, so I'm I'm constantly battling with: Am I encroaching too far on other people's space? Yeah, so. Yeah, thank God I don't have to. Boy, if I had a if I had any domestic partner at all, they would be like, they wouldn't like it. My whole house is mushrooms. There's mushrooms everywhere. Right. Yes. All right. So let's see here. Um. So how do you like the bags? I just started, I've messed with them a little bit and I just, I've probably got, I don't know, 20 bags or something going now. So I'm giving it another shot. I don't think it was fair the first time I did it. I, I used them when I first bought them. I basically used them to put all my iffy stuff in when I was starting to figure, trying to figure out what is too bacterial, what's not. I figured, well, I'll seal them in bags. If it does get funky, at least it's right. sealed in a bag. Um, of course, not surprisingly, I was like, man, these results aren't that great because I was sending all my bacterial funky shit, <laughs> you know. Right. So I've recently started trying it again with things that are not that I know. Okay, this one's okay. Let me see how it does in a bag. I'm just curious to see how the results will be. So bags are cool. I, I will, you know. There's pluses and minuses to everything. Right. Everything. 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 I will say this. 
I don't know too many bolt growers um, who hate bags. Really? Uh, a, a lot love bags. The reason is it contains contamination better. Yeah. Most of these guys are, they're doing their best to, you know, do good work, but every once in a while they get sloppy. Every once in a while somebody they hire isn't doing the best work. Bags will better contain contamination, it seems like. Yeah. So, so people love it for that reason. Um, when you get it all dialed in, it's pretty much set and forget. You don't got to do much at all. So that's great. Um, I will tell you. Let me see. bag sitting over here so this bag right here try not to show too much of the fruit um <clears throat> i started experimenting with not pack i used to pack the hell out of these bags right and, um I, I had a little burger press i would with all my weight i would pack these cakes down right and i wouldn't get side pins right and just because this is how I am, I was like, we're going to see if I can remove that step. Right. And so I definitely get more side pins. Yeah. Um, but I have seen that with bags. Depending upon the cultigen, it's not a problem. Like you can see here, there's not, it's not a lot of it. Right. But right. There, where is it? There, so there is one. That yeah. Side one. Pinning, but you but know, it, it, it's yeah. okay. It's not bad. Um, you just, I mean, it's, you do nothing. That's the nice it's, thing. It's I, and then the one thing I could say that I probably, of all the cultivation stuff, if there was one thing I would say I don't like about it, like, I don't want to do that. Like, that's the one, the one hold up in the whole process, washing damn tubs. I don't know. I don't, I don't enjoy oh washing God. tubs. Yeah. So the idea of just dropping it in a bag and being done with it, that is very appealing to me. So I'm interested to see how my bag trials will do. If it, man, if it works out well, then I may be switching all of those. I don't know. So, I'm t so I do something very controversial. Um, if you don't, if you don't like this, I don't care. I don't need a comment about it. I don't need anything, not from you, but from people watching this. Yeah, I like the it. Comments. Yeah. Um, I I use uh, Dr. Mike's MPG Plus. Right. I'm gonna tell you why I use it. I don't remember what trichoderma looks like. Really? So you've I, really I, found that I don't ever, 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 ever get it. And guess what? I don't even got a knock on wood. Hmm. I don't get it. I mix the shit as cheap as can be. I, right. I figured it out. It's about 10 cents a bag. I spray it on my grains. I shake it up. I spawn a bulk. And when my cake colonizes, I open my bag up. I also don't, I don't do the, um, sealer. I don't do any of that. I fold it over the top. Try to do this well without showing what it is. I fold it once. I put a piece of tape on it. That's all I do. Right. You can use a clip. You can use a paper. Yeah. Clip. I just use paper clips. You, it does not have to be complicated. Um, and when I, so when it's, when the cake is fully colonized, I will right. op open the bag up in front of the flow hood. I will take a paper towel, one single sheet. It's usually soaking wet on the, 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 the top of the cake. Right. I lightly cover the cake with that one piece of paper towel. I then take some other paper towel because the sides, because when I shake them up, when I do the, my spawn to bulk, right, I, I'm, I'm mixing everything up. I balloon the bag out. I twist it. And then that's how I shake it up. Shake it uh, all okay. around. Okay, yeah, so you get and all over the sides. Up. So there's sh crap all, all around the sides. So once it's, but I don't, that's fine as it's colonizing. Once it is fully colonized, I then go in there. I protect the cake surface and also sort of wick away some of the moisture with that little piece of, paper towel that I lay down and then I go in with more and I do this barehanded. Sorry, Ed. I do this barehanded. Sometimes I don't even go wash my hands beforehand, but I do spray ISO all over my hands, do a little wipe down. And then I go in there and I'm like scraping all the crud off of the side of the bag. Right. That also gets rid of some excess moisture because bags do tend to hold on to that. So in that one step where I'm going from the cake being colonized to fruiting, 
I, I want to clean it up. I hate getting vermiculite on the fruit. Like I almost, yeah, like I can't do anything with the fruit if, if there's vermiculite on it. So I'm yeah, trying to clean the yeah. side of the bag and I'm reducing a little of the moisture. You don't got to worry because by the very next day, there'll be more condensation on there anyway, because that's how condensation works. And it's kind of good because it pulls more, uh, more of the moisture out of the cake. Um, and then I fold it over and I don't open that thing again until I'm harvesting. And with this MPG plus, when I pull that cake out, I pull it out barehanded. Right. I set it down on my little tray. I put a couple paper towel down. I harvest my fruit. I put it back in. If it doesn't feel dry, I'll get a second flush. If right. it feels dry and I want to run it again and I feel like doing this, I will rehydrate. If I don't feel like rehydrating, it goes in the garbage. I don't, you know, Gigi ain't got time. If it, if right. it was like underwhelming or whatever. Um, but I have gone seven flushes on wow. these MPG plush plus cakes. Uh, John's told me that he's had people go 11 flushes. Jeez. I was like, I don't even know if I believe you, but I do believe you. Cause I know, I swear to God, you could wipe your ass with this cake and it would still grow fruit and it wouldn't grow trichoderma. That's crazy. It's might have given it a try, maybe. It's just very resistant. Now he, before I started sterilizing my substrate, I did have to, uh, I would say maybe one out of 10, one out of 15 cakes would trike out on me. Right. Prior to fully colonized, being fully colonized. Right. I talked to him about it. I said, what do you think that's all about? He said, are you sterilizing your substrate? I said, well, no, I'm not a fool. Why would I do that? It's right. inner, it, there's no, yeah. you know, all the crap you hear everybody say, right. he goes, well, just try it. Just sterilize your, your sub after you get its field capacity, bag it, sterilize it in the bags. He's like, then you get your bag, your grow bag ready to go. So I tried that. Bye-bye trichoderma. So I, hmm. I, I'm not lying. I haven't had it in over a year. Wow. Yeah, I can't say that. But mine, usually when I get it, I mean, I'm not shocked. It's it's usually an iffy bag. That, and I'll mark right. them. It was right. slightly bacterial or whatever. Now. But I'll put those in a different room and I keep my eye on them. Your, and usually your that's oats. just something I really want. Yeah. Can yep. you get triple washed whole oats? From I need to search, honestly. I've just been using the tractor supply because when I did switch grain suppliers, all the grains I got, it was all triple water, but it had been sitting in their warehouse so long. It was right. infested with bugs. So I need to find a better supplier. I suspect if I found cleaner oats, I would be even more happy. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I like the oats in general. Um, I don't think there was anything wrong with the other grains. I think it was the bugs. At first, I blamed my prep. I got them, you know, I thought, well, I got overhydrated or underhydrated. Or, but I, I think now, the once I finally, so many bags of grain, I finally went back to the source bags and started looking at it closely. And my, every grain had a hole drilled in it and was hollowed out. And I was like, man, every, there's, uh, this has all been eaten by bugs. No wonder I'm having yeah. problems. You know, bugs so I just, start to but I need to look at it. Uh, certainly when I move to Colorado, I'm going to have to find a new supplier. So yeah. I'll probably look at that then and, and try to find a better oat supplier. See, you say this and I can't remember who told me this the first time they told me, they said, next time you go to your grain, so your feed store, uh, and, and you get a bag, of whatever you're getting ask to go back and see where they got it from. Yeah. And I did that once and I was like, Oh, maybe I didn't want to freaking see that. This yeah. place is looking rough. Yeah. When I had my hunting land in Selma, I went to the co-op all the time to buy seed grain for the deer, all that kind of stuff. Right. And yeah, I mean, it was stored in a warehouse full of rats and mice and bugs yeah. and, yeah. and not all places are like that. So if you can yeah. find somebody who stores it or somebody, uh, the other thing I think might help, I think this is where tractor supply is just better. You know, one it's stored indoors in their little storeroom. And they don't store a ton of it. They get a pallet or two in, they sell it, they get another pallet or two in. So yep. it's it's a constant rotation. That but helps. it is dirty. It's full of sticks and grass and grasshoppers and whatever. Now, do you do do you do a traditional grain prep or are you doing no soak, no simmer? I do the traditional, I guess. So I just uh I used to clean it and pick all the sticks out. I don't do that anymore. Now I just I measure out the uh I've kind of got it figured out about how much I need. I just measure that in a pot. 
fill it up with water and boil it until I see, you know, one or two grains start to burst. Then I pour it out in a strainer and let it, let it, you know, whatever, drain off and, yeah. and dry-ish for whatever, some amount, a few hours, whatever, and then bag it up and, and PC it. And I've had pretty decent luck with that. But I tried the, I haven't tried no soaking no simmer with oats. I've done it with Milo and other things and it, it worked fine other than, you know, you got some clumping at the bottom and you got to do the hot shake and all that, but, but it worked. Yeah. Add a little gypsum to the water, the yeah, water jug, it, it, it helps. Now, the other thing that helps, um, and I figured this out just by being lazy one time and, or, or not being lazy, but having something else I had to go off and do is I, I'd mixed everything up, um, and I got distracted and went and did something else. And when I came back, I realized all my grain had sucked up all that water mm. and I ran it and I found it shaked better. Hmm. Go with so, the gypsum water. So then I, no, this was just by, um, not running it immediately. Oh, just letting so, it, letting it soak in. Letting it actually soak up and then shaking it after it had soaked up Huh. and then running it. So that helped. You, you could still get some. Then I started running 50-50 oats millet. That helped. Hmm. Then the gypsum. So if you do the 50-50 with the gypsum water, and it doesn't have to be a lot of gypsum in the water. Right. Those two things with the hot shake, I mean, before that, there were clumpy grossnesses yeah. on the bottom. You couldn't get out. I don't have that problem at all anymore. That's what I had. That was the problem. I, that's why I quit doing it with the millet as I had. Most of it was hydrated fine, but at the bottom... When I shook it, even in the hot shake, there were these lumps of porridge looking stuff that eventually hardened up and turned it. They colonized, but man, I let it sit for a long time colonizing because I was thinking there's no way the core of that knot is colonized. I need to let that really get infected with the mycelium before I, yeah. but it worked. I mean, it did work, yeah. but obviously there's some tricks to it if you know what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so if you just get all the, if almost all of the water gets sucked up into the grain first, and then you shake that up. Yeah, that's smart. I didn't think about that. I just see it, you're poured good. it in the bag and threw it in the PC. I had no, I, I didn't even think to let it soak into the grain first. Yeah, I mean, if you're North Spore, you can't do that. If you're some big commercial outfit, you don't have time to do that. But right. yeah, for, for us, we, it doesn't take that long. You can. Yeah, man, what I want to do is get, I want to get a big autoclave so I can do just like all my bags for the month or at least a week or two all at once oh, and yeah. not have to run, you know, multiple PCs all the time and all that, but it's all I just money. want an autoclave because it's cool, but it yeah, is cool. Isn't it? I got no room for that either. And the other thing is if I get an autoclave, I can play with the gourmets more. That's what's holding me back on them is being able to, to sterilize that much substrate, like trying to do, you know. Uh, master mix blocks or whatever that's 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 a lot of pc time to if you're going to really grow any it's a lot but you yeah. want to know how you cut down the pc time you just buy more pcs yeah i've got two now but yeah yeah that's why i'm at i'm like do i buy more pcs and then i got a glass top stove so i can't run them all at the same time yeah just so i had to get crawfish burner. burners or something yeah. you know some yeah. kind of gas burners for outside or cadcos or something and those the induction burners dude the they're yeah. they're, they're consistent Hmm. Yeah. I'll look into that then. I, that's worth checking out as well. But yeah, just more. Um, the minute you got the autoclave, though, it's a whole nother level. Yeah, I think when I move to Colorado, that's I'm, I want. That's my dream. If I have a little fantasy, is you know, build a little storage shed out back or a little you know building and and have that be my grandpa. Have it, my own little a hood in there, the autoclave where I can do a whole bunch of bags at once, seal them up, store them all in that little building, and. You know, have that separated from everything else, and I got lots of dreams. We'll see how much of it comes true. All those dreams are just work, man. That's why I tell tell my kids: you can have as many dreams as you want. The ones that come true are the ones that you work at. That's, That's it. All you got to do. Um. So, so tell me about this. You mentioned working with monocarions, right? Now we actually haven't talked too much about this. I know you, I know you're doing this stuff. Um, talk to me about how you got the bug, um, and, and where you got your information. I think I, I have a guess where you got your information from. Um, uh, cause I, we, we got a mutual friend, but right. uh, walk, walk me through, um, how you got bit by that bug and how that journey has been so far. 
That was a that was a natural inclination for me. I think I came like so many people in this thing. I think probably was interested in the cannabis world in the past. Was pretty big into that in the nineties, I guess. The back then it was forum days. There wasn't groups or whatever. But anyway, so I mean, I was interested in breeding cannabis and stuff like that. So I had a little bit of knowledge of kind of you know genetics and how things would work when you do crosses and all that kind of stuff, but nothing about fungus. Um, and then, so yeah, I got into growing the fungus once I got successful with actually having, you know, success with that. And by then, so I was watching your podcast and at that time it was on at the end of every episode. So you were talking to him. I heard y'all talking about it. Um, I was watching other things. I watched, um, Gary's fresh from the farm fungi a lot. Right. Yep. Um, he was talking about cereal dilution and all that. So, I mean, I, I once I knew it could be done. That was the first hurdle in my mind. I didn't know it could be done. I didn't know you could cross different. I didn't know that was even a thing. So then I heard people talking about that. I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. So that, all right, you can do that. Not as easy as it is with cannabis, <laughs> right? A lot more involved. Um, but it can be done. So I want to learn that. I want to like, who doesn't want to have their own things? Like I want to take, like, I like, I like this friend's thing. I like that friend's thing. I like both of them. I can cross them. I got my own thing. Plus I'm promoting both of their things. It's just good for everybody. I'm having fun doing it. So yeah, y'all can't hear my dog raise it. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that was it. And then I watched, yeah. So I was watching you and I, I listened to Ed talking about it. So I started, uh, you know, just trying to figure out what method did I want to use? Was it going to be cereal dilution? Was it going to be this new grab and drag thing I'm hearing about? Um, so I looked into both of them and it just, I was just like, Man, the grab and drag thing it's so much easier. And it's ironic. So the, the, my first mono carry on wasn't a planned thing. The first mono carry on I got, I understand the principles from listening to you guys talk. I knew what a mono was. It's a single spore that has germinated and made mycelium. Hasn't met another. And I had uh, some plates from pretty early on my first agar work that I had streaked and they just didn't do anything. I just, you know, I streaked a swab on them. It probably didn't have many spores and it just sat there and didn't do anything. I didn't throw them away. I sat them on a shelf and forgot about them. And maybe month, month and a half later, I came back and there was one little speck. Just, I just happened to catch it right when it was going off. And I was just thinking, I was like, I bet that so much is a mono carry on. After all this time, After all what are the time. chance that two spores are going off right beside each other? So yeah, I isolated it to another plate and then I had it. And I was like, well, what the hell am I going to do with it now? I got one mono, can't do much with that. So that, yeah, so I went down the rabbit hole. I was like, I got to get another one because I got it now. Like, I want to see it. I want to do it. And and that was where it all started for me. Nice. So I figured out that the grab and drag seemed easier to me. It less materials, less, don't have to have all the vials and, you know, all that. And and tried it and it, shit, it worked. <laughs> I was like, nice. well, that was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I had to go buy a microscope. And that was the biggest hurdle that I personally had was learning microscopy. It wasn't that it was hard. It was that convincing myself that I was correct, that there's not a clamp there. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. So having to go look at things with clamps and going, okay, I, well, I see them. There's, here's one, there's one. Every time I look at these, I find them. I can never find it on this one. Yeah. And I, so I'll put them together. And the first time I did it, I was still nervous. So I put one mono on one side of a plate, one mono on the other side of a plate, let them come together. And then maybe like three or four days after they met, I took a transfer from right next to the original mono of one, right next to the original mono of the other, and one transfer from the barrage and fruited all of them. And I thought, well, okay, yeah. if they're not all, mon if it wasn't two monos, then the transfer I took from whichever was a dicarion, it's still going to be a dicarion. And the mono would have, so yeah, I mean, I, I just fruited them all out and they all came out to be the same exact thing. So yeah, it was pretty obvious after several tubs of that, I, I was finally convinced myself that it actually worked and I was correct. It didn't have clamps. It was a mono carry on everything. Every tub was the same. And then the real clincher for me was when I ran spores from those fruits and everything was just, yeah, I got so many different things. It was like, well, obviously that's not just one thing. There was a lot of different stuff in there, a lot of recombination going on. So that was how that right. was for me. Yeah. You you got that one fluke mono. 
Yeah. And, and, that and that's, the, that's the bug that bit you right yeah. there. I'm telling you, once you look at it and you're just like, I remember the first time I did the grab and drag and I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I got like 15 monos right yeah, now. Yeah, like an embarrassment of riches. I don't even need to take them all. I'm just going to grab a few. And yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, exactly the same. I had, I was like, wow, this is now I've got uh, 30 or 40 of them. I hadn't even got under the scope yet because I just, that's the biggest issue I have is not getting the monos is verifying them now. It's just having the time to look at everything yeah, under the yeah. scope. And yeah. it's not sexy. Uh, Ed keep, no, Ed, that's not Ed the fun kept part. telling me he's like, Oh dude, it's just not like, he's like most people, even if they think they want to learn microscopy, they don't. Cause once they start doing it, they're going to see how monotonous it is. It's so tedious. <laughs> and it is real tedious. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I have to force, even for, you know, pulling the scope out, something new, I want to swab it. I'm not going to swab it till I pull a gill, a piece of gill out and look at it under the scope just real quick. Yep. Cool. Got spores. Great. Yeah. I, Cause I, I'm not, I've gotten swabs that were blue yeah, I've done and that. there were no spores there. Yeah. That's, that's frustrating. I've had that happen too. Now, what really makes me wonder though, is the amount of times that if you got those swabs fresh enough. You probably, and they germinate, it's probably just a gill tissue. Yeah, that just happens. Just gill tissue. I've got up some plates now that I stroked out. They're like that. It's just, I mean, there's lots of germination points, but they're all rhizomorphic as hell just right off the bat. And I'm like, yeah. hey, I don't think those are spores. Exactly. That's, it just looks like, yeah, it looks like clone plates. Then that's a bummer. Yeah. Some things just don't want to cooperate in that way. It's hard to get spores out of some of these It's things. a bummer or it's great. Yeah, right, if you're not looking for a spore dump, it's great. Everybody's talking about, man, how can we, you know, we want to send the clone, the culture. We don't want to send spores. They want to get the exact thing. So I got to send, this is why we do LC. This is why we right. do plates. This is why everybody's doing these little like micro centrifuge tubes. Um, we were talking before. I literally took a chunk of agar one time. I sliced it so there's barely any agar on it, and it was just the mycelium. It was about a half inch by a half inch. I put it in a little uh, vacuum sealed bag, and I lightly vacuum sealed it and sent it, and that made it. Um, right, we're all looking for these ways to do this, but if all we have to do is just aggressively swab the fruit, knowingly getting some some tissue out yeah. there and send it right away. Yeah, if they're fresh, it's going to go off. I, I don't know if they're old. Off. I don't know how, like, it, once it dries all out, I don't know if that still works well or not. But I guess it would. I don't know. And I've, I've gotten lots of swabs from people where you can see gill tissue on them. And if, yeah. yeah, when I'm running, if I want multi-spore, I avoid those. But if I want their clone and I don't have their clone, man, sh Stuff that down on the agar. Yeah. Yep. If you, I think people would be surprised if you rehydrate dried fruit. Maybe yeah. Maybe that two-year-old fruit. I think you'd be surprised how often it, it, it will germinate. That it, yeah, it's I not unheard of. No, no, not at all. I think it's a pretty well-known technique. I, I also think, because I, I talk to these people that know way more than me, and there are some questions they can readily answer. That's usually taxonomy type stuff. The stuff they can't answer me is when I get real specific about, so mycelium, like how far down in the ground does it grow? So like here in Ohio, right. right? When the ground freezes down a good two, three feet, right? Is that going to kill all that yeah. mycelium? Does the mycelium that's four feet deep then survive? So when the spring thaw comes, it's slowly as the, the ground is thawing, is it then slowly reinvigorating itself? Um, but after, I think the most recent story of this Ginevra, uh, one of my friends on right. uh, the Discord and on Instagram, she took a dried fruit that had been dried for quite a while and uh, rehydrated it and got it to, to germinate on a plate. And she grew fruit from it and it worked. So I'm like, you know, there are these things we don't really know. Yeah. But this stuff's got to be resilient. It's tough. Yeah. You think about that. I mean, it's in the ground, you know, you think, I don't know, but, but where you're at, if it freezes that deep, you just, you just wonder how it's, and then a, a, in a tree trunk or something, you know, it freezes during, I don't know how it survives. Yeah. Mushrooms are tough, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And the, I, I forget where I heard this and I could be getting it wrong, but they, they figured out like the hyphae, um, 
when the hyphae is growing, it can exert like osmotic pressure that's like crazy. Oh yeah, like, I've seen. I remember as a kid seeing crazy. them break through the asphalt driveway in my grandmother's driveway. I mean, just mushrooms pushing up through the asphalt. How, how did that do that? Yeah, it has this soft, spongy little thing have enough yeah. strength to break what feels like stone. That's yeah. Right. I mean, it's, I know asphalt's a composite, but still. Yeah. 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 I mean, you couldn't take that mushroom and smash it into something and break anything with it. It would just smoosh. Right. But, exactly. But yeah. It's, they're, they're interesting, man. It's, they do. I don't know. And mushrooms is, are a trip. This is what is so great about all of this is you start off and you're just growing cubes. Right. And then you get into the morphology of it all. And so now you're growing all these different cultigens. And then, and then you go, oh, but now there's, I saw somebody post about this gymnopolis. Now I want to grow that. And yeah. Now I want to grow tamps and now I want to grow zaps and now I want to grow this. And now I want to grow gourmets and you get a Martha tent or you get some sort of humidified setup and you're like, oh, gourmets are simple. If I, if you set them up right, right. and they're cool and they're fun. And, and the next thing you know, you're just utterly in it. Yeah. You're just in it because you can't. Yeah, I want to do more gourmets. I, I've got the tent and all that. I've got to get a humidifier and all that stuff. I had problems with the uh, too much CO2 buildup in my tent, but I got to get all that dialed. And, and I just kind of gave up on it because, like I said, the, trying to, I don't have time with all the cubes I'm doing. I just didn't have time yeah. to dedicate the PC time to the substrate. That was my right. issue. I, when I had that much time to run the PC, I needed to put grains in it or something instead of substrate but if i get that autoclave it's gonna be on i'm gonna have i'm gonna have plenty of mushrooms to eat there you go but yeah. now you gotta be careful you can't keep up you can't keep yeah up. that's the other issue <laughs> you, better yeah. got, you better have some friends who like mushrooms because you are you're gonna go yeah. from zero to too many what i found funny with mine is i didn't have much luck in the tent then i got mushrooms and they were fine i ate them they just they weren't pretty you know what i mean they were kind of right. misshapen from the co2 so I got one flush and it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Put them outside, just put them on the back porch and forgot about them. And I got some beautiful flushes out there oh, just bet. sitting in open air. Just, yeah, they did. They got some really nice mushrooms that way. So exactly. I'm not suggesting that's the way to do it, but I got some extras that way. But yeah, I want to do some more gourmets and I'd like to get more into the exotics and all that stuff just for the fun of growing them. A lot of the exotics, I don't, I mean, they yield so poorly and. I got plenty of mushrooms. I don't need them for the mushrooms, but it's just right. something different. Just something, a new experiment and got to grow them all. Yeah. Just something just to try to grow them. a new method and whatever. Plus you want to see them, right? Like seeing a exactly. photo of pearly gates is not the same as growing pearly gates. No. Yeah. Seeing a photo of toke is not the same as holding that weird fruit, right? Yeah. Or, or the first. Yeah. There's something grow. about and growing it yourself. Even yeah. if it's not your thing, you didn't create just, you know, knowing that you put the effort in and then watching it and then being excited and, oh, it's, yes. you know, got from my primordia and now it's got pins and I don't, I love all that. I can, I'm with you. It, to me, it's over when they're done. I got the whole process when they're growing from grain to tub, I love. And once I'm harvesting them, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm Done with you. Those. I mean, nice. Yeah, I'll put them in a bag, save them. But the, but minute the fun I'm, part was growing them and watching them. Yes. The minute I start cutting them and harvesting them, I'm, I'm yeah, that's, it's done. Then it's like, well, yeah. okay, yeah, that was exactly. fun. Exactly. All right. So. so speaking of harvesting fruits, you sent me some photos. Yeah. We we, we can't talk about you as a you know up and coming one to watch, really good, <laughs> credible. He's got scruples and a moral compass kind of grower, and not actually show some of your fruit. So let me let, right. let me pull some of these fruit up here. So mm -hmm. I'll pull them up. You're gonna tell me what we're looking at. No, tell that, me the story. So that was uh, I got uh, swabs of chocolate crinkle from Dave, mm -hmm. and actually, right when you when he did his uh, him and the, the whatever when they announced the Dave's faves and all that on your show, I mean, yeah. I rushed out right then and bought a pack. Nice. Um, and this is the result. So I got a bunch of different things in that tub. I had an interesting albino fruit pop up, and I cloned it, and this is it. This was uh, so I guess it's an albino chocolate crinkle. Um, it wow. started, I, I cloned it, you know, a fairly well, normal for chocolate crinkle, but a crinkly albino fruit, pretty, pretty normal mushroom cap stem. 
and and yeah, grew it out. And it, it started, I thought, well, damn, it's all going to be blobs. It just looked like a tub full of blob starts. And then the crowns and the crests all started making caps. And yeah, it's just kind of freaky looking. I thought it was interesting. So I sent you some pictures. That tub did a lot of interesting stuff. And that's just a close up. It had that one that's almost like a piece of albino bacon or something. Oh, it's like a big that. It's like one never ending. Yeah, it grew like a big fan. It's it's yeah, it's strange. It did a few of those. There was quite a, a couple of those that were like these weird fanned out. Um, and I had in that same tub, I didn't expect this one to do it because uh, it was a standard looking mushroom. I also cloned some one, some golden colored, some pigmented ones that were real yellowy that did that same kind of mm. like bacon shape, whatever that fanned out cap. So and they're in bags now. I'm interested to see what they'll do. A lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff came out of that tub. Blobs right, so, and wacky mushrooms and everything. So these were just a clone of that album. Yep, this is just straight up a cloned okay. isolation from a chocolate trinkle tub. So this is Dave, right, Dave cool. Wombat's work there. Yeah. All right, so next one up, what do we got here? Yeah. That one is, uh, I guess you would call it a Chode Wave revert. So I got uh, Albino Chode Wave from Raymond Medici. Yeah. Um, and grew them out and i got some nice albino chode wave fruits and i had a few i said it bit but i had a bacterial bag that i sent and i put it in a bag and it did you know like bacterial bags do did a lot of weird stuff uh and one of them was so i got a couple pigmented fruits um this one looked leukistic when i cloned it i thought well i got a leukistic it was a white mushroom with pigmented spores hmm. and i grew it out and i got this so a uh, pigmented but they were pretty and they and I thought it was pretty neat. So yeah, I mean, that was a so it's a yeah a pigmented reversion of uh, albino chode wave. I like it. So it's another isolate, just an isolation of, of somebody else's work. If only you could have gotten a fuller canopy, though. Yeah, I, there's that corner there that doesn't have one in it. Right. You're okay. See, you you found the one one spot an additional fruit could have been. Okay. Yeah. I but I was pretty happy with it. It did, did nicely. I mean, it, and they were pretty. Lots of, lots of kind of ruffly caps and different colors. And yeah, I, I mean, it's sort of like a ODPE, to be honest. It is similar to that. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, we got. I was pretty happy year. with that one. That one is one of my crosses. That was uh, iceberg monocarion number one, combined with albino gumby number two. I think. Okay. Um, so that's the original Mon Mon cross. That's the, I haven't, I've got spores from those fruits. I got three or four plates of them running now. So we'll get to see what the, uh, the so next you're generation. F, you're on F2 now of these. Yeah, right. That'll, okay. that'll be the next. Yeah. I've got those going now. I had, I think I had them on grain. I don't think they're in a tub yet, but, but, uh, yeah, definitely moving, moving forward to see what that one gives me. Was pretty happy with them. That chocolate crinkle mono seems to kind of dominate most of the crosses I've done with it. I, I get a lot of, I'm assuming it's an albino chocolate crinkle mono because everything I've done with it has been mono. I haven't had any partially pigmented fruits or anything, but yeah, I guess the gnarly stipes and yeah, didn't really get the gumby look, but I'm hoping I'll get some, some of those maybe in the, in the next generation. You're only well, not mad at it. Yeah. Your yeah. time will tell. Time yeah. Will that's tell it. On that one. Very good. Yeah. For a mon mon, it's not too boring. I mean, it's, it's, you know, uh, it, I think it has potential. It'd be not, nice to see what it does. They do start out a little boring sometimes. Yeah, they're not always the most exciting thing yeah. at first. But that next generation, yeah. So that's right. that one about? is Iceberg Mono Number One, crossed with the same chocolate crinkle uh, Mono Carry On. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, that was some Iceberg swabs I got from Ed, and uh, it was another actually an uh, accidental Mono. I, stroked a few plates out and had just one germination point on one of them and so i isolated it to a new it was a grab and drag but it just you know luckily it, it i didn't even have to work for that one it just popped up by itself and i isolated it and it, um, yeah so I've, I've used it and and it came out pretty good you can still see the chocolate crinkle pretty strong in it but uh but the caps are a little different the gills are more ruffly and be another one that i, I can't wait to see what it does in the next round yeah i feel like this one might do some cool stuff for sure yeah it's definitely got the background to do some some interesting things yeah i think between both iceberg and chocolate crinkle are pretty unusual so it should hopefully we'll throw out some, some interesting yeah things. those little holes around the margin are kind of interesting 
Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, it all did that. And some of the later flushes, the you know, the caps got real hygrophonous spots on them where they were sort of translucent. And, yeah, I see a lot. But it almost always has those kind of breaks in the cap where the you can see the gills through yeah. the holes as they get bigger. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, if, if you look at the top of the fruit on the left, it gives a little face. You got the two yeah. eyes. <laughs> it does look like that, yeah. Mouth, yeah. It's got a nose and two eyes. It's yeah, like I didn't even notice that before. Yeah. That's, yeah, more than gnarly stipes. And, oh, yeah. Which seems to be that that mono seems that chocolate crinkle mono. Everything I've done with it seems to have that kind of gnarly stripes. So hopefully, we'll get more and more of that in the future. Yeah, if you aren't listening to my dog. He's oh, I hear up. somebody is. I yeah, like sure, but she's a coon hound. She's very vocal. She's uh, she's bitching at my other dog, undoubtedly. Yeah, the hounds. They they're kind they they're almost like cats where they kind of do their own thing they don't give a crap what you you want from them they're, she's, they're gonna do whatever they want i love her but she is vocal very very vocal she likes to talk all right these kind of look real bougie what are these i like these that was a clone of i, I ran some jack frost um swabs from that same day faves um pack and i got you know jack frost but I also had another, it was uh, probably a bacterial. I remember it was in a bag um, and I got a pigmented fruit in it. So I cloned it. It was kind of a lot. I, sometimes I get these pigmented fruits and they're just basic cubes and I ignore them. But this one was a little different. The stipe was kind of thick and cap was a little different. I mean, I'm going to clone that one see what it does. And then it's Jack Frost. I haven't seen a lot of Jack Frost reverts. Probably there's some out there. I don't know. Anyway, so I cloned it and ran it. And this was the tub that came from it. And it was definitely different, not your standard Jack Frost at all. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. It also had a, some blobby stuff that popped up in it. That's um, I've got that tub behind me. I can show you what that did eventually if you, if you want to see it. But, um, but yeah, I think I sent you some pictures of the blobs as they were forming. Um, but yeah, it's done some neat stuff. So that one, and people were very interested in it. Yeah, there's one of the, that's kind of the second flush coming on. So it started with blobs and then they got those kind of crests that were pigmented that turned some of them have turned into caps now. Um, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. I don't know. I don't know if that'll repeat or not. I'm gonna clone it and see. But yeah, the mushrooms are interesting. They got that same kind of broken open top where you could see the gills right. um through that opening or the cracks in the cap or whatever, but real dense, woody stipes and almost reminds me of something chocolate crinkle, but I promise it came mm -hmm. out of a Jack Frost tub or bag. Nice. Yeah. yeah it was I like interesting. This one. Well, uh, so this reverted Jack Frost. I don't know. Right. Yeah. My buddy it. SPSP calls it uh, Jack D. Frost. So I've kind Jack of hung that name on it. Yeah. Nice. Jack like D. Frost. That. But yeah. It's I thought probably it was the good. best revert name I've heard. That's good. Now, I yeah. love also, we should just mention here uh, when he runs Dave Wombat stuff, he gets it from Dave Wombat or he gets it from a, you know, authorized reseller of Dave Wombat stuff. Yeah. If he, if he gets, you know, if he's running Chodeway, if he's going to Raymond Medici's, right? Yeah. So, I always try to find the originator, originator of the thing if I can. Sometimes that's hard to determine. Yeah. But if they're out there and it's a known thing, I'm going to get it from them. I don't, why do I need to get it from somebody else? It's their thing. It's a way to do it. All right. Now, what is this little tub packer right here? So that is, um, I got, that was my PF albino mono, which was my first mono, the accidental one I got. Okay. Uh, I crossed it to, I got some, I uh, got some plates from Brock Lee and he gave me a free swab of, uh, it was marked A-R-R-S-Q. And I asked him about it. It was, uh, it was a Roger Rabbit that he had isolated. That was a squatty uh, albino Roger Rabbit. So albino Roger Rabbit squats. Um, oh. Yeah. So I took that and I got a mono from it and crossed it with that pf mono so i did two different i did a mono one and mono two from roger rabbit this is pf albino times roger rabbit mono number one um both pretty similar the number two has longer stipes more of a jack frosty look this one's more stumpy and thicker stipes now is this f1 yep F1 also. Who knows? You never know. What's going yeah, to who knows what's going to do in the next. The, the Roger Rabbit swab produced quite a uh, assortment of fruits, um, different, all squatty, fat stuff, some roughly capped, some not. So, yeah, I expect it'll do some interesting stuff in the next generation. I mean, I hope so. But I'm not mad with the Mon Mon. I mean, it's no, not no. ugly. Yeah. 
that's very so. cool but this this is a look right this is like one, one of the favorite plays of cubensis right here yeah it's kind of your you know, standard this, there are many cultigens yeah. that if you look carefully yes there are distinct differences but this is but a, a, a general look yeah. for a lot yeah of kind of your avery jack kind yeah. of sort of look yes yeah. exactly um uh, but it's good that's yeah i'm not mad at it it'd be interesting to see what it does in the future exactly i like it i like it i like it yeah all that stuff looks great i just love the fact that um you did it you said let's do some monos and and so for example um do you need a microscope eventually yeah you probably are going to get one if, if, if you want to keep playing this game because yeah. there is a point where you really do want to know am i actually doing this so sure you'll buy a microscope yeah. in the beginning though can you do some grab and drag can if you really are you know methodical about paying attention to those germ plates and and you really are looking carefully for just the absolute first sign of growth and it's it's somewhat isolated growth and it doesn't happen like it doesn't get dense and and thick too fast these are right. like little things that can give you clues that there's a very good chance you got yourself a mono carry on and then you can start playing games right and and and, and eventually yeah, you know, you're gonna need a microscope but you could i guess theoretically you could really well, you can certainly do it. The proving it is going to be the hard part. You can start playing games. Right. You can start doing it. See what it's. But all you can about. do what I did. You could isolate yeah. two things that you believe are monos. My first, if I, if you're going to, you know, I'm. They're going to be so mad at me for even saying you would think about doing it without a microscope. But, you know, if you were just, if you just don't have the money for a microscope, you know, I would say, and you want to play with it, not do the grab and drag. Get or you know what, grab your monos, put them on a plate and just leave them. Let them sit for a month or two. Right. And if, if you see a rhizomorph, big ropey thing blow out of the side, it's not a mono. And right. if it gets pins, it's not a mono. But yeah, if you keep if it getting comatose, up, weird, wacky mycelium, and it's wispy or it's just tomatose, no, yeah, I mean, maybe do what I did. Put one transfer on one side, one on the other, let them grow together, and then grow out transfers from all three, you know, from just, you yeah. know, but if it's clamped and those clamps have run across it, then you should have, the same thing in all of your transfers. It all should be the same thing. And and I did it with a pigmented and an albino so that I would know. So that like if if this side is pigmented and this side's albino, that's not a cross. You know. Right. And and the middle is some of each that you didn't get across. But if right. if if the brown side is now lightly pigmented, the albino side is now lightly pigmented, and the middle of the plate where the two met is all lightly pigmented and looks the same. Probably a pretty good chance it works. So now it's time to go get your microscope and look at it. So when right. people question you, you can say, yeah, I've done the work. But that's my point. My point is start doing that work and get right. to where you go. Okay, now I need a microscope. Yeah, because that's what's going to just do it. And then you're going to get excited enough. You're going to be like me. You're going you're to want to know. You're going to want to verify it. You're going to prove it. For me, I wanted to prove it to myself. Right. And and then eventually then you've done it. And so when somebody starts questioning you, you don't have to feel all oh maybe i don't think it worked you say you just describe what you did and you know just let the chips fall where they may because that's the organic i used and yeah. that's organic if if you just go and buy all the stuff and get it all there and then you go okay now i got to do it yeah it's i a don't different vibe that it is then you can play around with this right now you can do grab and drag right now yeah just give it exactly a get see what it looks like and then once you have your mono that you're yeah, you're, I mean, be prepared to spend some money on a scope because you're, you're going to get motivated to want to use it. You're going to want to, I did, I wanted to prove it to myself and I just wanted to see it. I wanted to see what people were talking about. It's one thing to see other people's little videos and pictures and all that, but to, and it is be prepared for the frustrations of learning how to get a good slide prep. And, you know, the first few times I didn't, I looked at, I was like, what is this mush? I can't see any mycelium at all in here. And right. I, I went, that was one of the things that really impressed me about it. I, it was when it was early on with me communicating with him and I was really nervous. I mean, he was this PhD guy. I don't, he's not going to want to talk to me. And, uh, but yeah, I, I asked him about that. I was like, oh, I'm having real trouble looking at these monos and being able to see anything. I don't understand microscopy. I've never done it. And 15 minutes later, there was a video on YouTube. Here's how you prep a slide. And yeah. 
you know and so it was very helpful in that way and, yeah man he's good for that like made to order uh yeah that's all really of them how a I'm, lot of his content yeah. is generated somebody will ask him a question used to do this somebody asked him a question in the server and then we chit chat and go yeah somebody asked me about this i guess i'll do a video about that tomorrow and that's yeah cool. he's been so helpful to me I, cool. I had to learn how to come correct he doesn't like broad questions that don't you know i mean you, you have to you know he's you got to appreciate who he is and where he is and all that and his knowledge and not treat him like he's you know yeah, I mean, see, whatever it's not so, even it's not even that it's not even like wasting his time it's he right the the guy that approved of his thesis was like one of the heavy hitter taxonomists right this guy right. ran the ucbn uh when they did their major revision he told me all this stuff and he's like this guy was a stickler yeah I bet. so I mean, you can't. Yeah, it's the background he comes from. I mean, can't you spell to... a word wrong, and if you got a question, it better be specific. This is, it's not like a jerk move. It is literally. No, it's like, how do you the, answer it if you don't? Yeah. The better the question is, the better the answer yeah. will be. Yeah, so that was all I had. I just had to, right. and I learned that quick. I was like, okay, well, he's right. I don't, I, yeah. nobody can answer that question. I need to figure out. So that was my biggest thing is learning how to word my questions and all that so that I was actually asking for information that he could give me. Right. Um, yep. But he's mm -hmm. so helpful, man. And it, yeah, he's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's been a big help. I mean, and his so channel, big. I mean, I, I just tell people all the time. People are like, oh, how do you do this? Or, or I saw you and Ned talked about this. And I'm like, go to his channel. Yeah, it's all there. It's there. Yep. Yeah, I, I send a lot of people to his channel. He's been very helpful to me. And all y'all have, man. It's, it's like I say, I'm just <laughs> amazed. I'm sitting here talking to y'all and. I was uh, most, I was the, I think I heard somebody else say this on a podcast once, but uh, most of my best friends don't even know who I am. And that was true for the longest time. Like I, my best friends were people I watched on on YouTube or whatever. And to me, y'all were my friends. Like I listen to you talk. I, I right. feel like you're my friend, but you didn't know who I was. And now I'm actually talking. To I did you. though. It's, I, it's I, crazy. I saw you hitting the, I paid attention pretty early on. I, I, yeah, that's, it's getting you harder to talk to me. I'll give you that. Like a lot of, you know, I, I was, it's, it's getting harder these the days. Around. I can't yeah, keep I up with all the new people. I used to I be able to that. see every new person that showed up in a group. I could assess them. I could like see what I thought about them. I can't keep up anymore. Yeah, Mike, oh, this guy. Community. I mean, just, I mean. Well, and there's so many, it's amazing. I, you know, I really haven't been in the Facebook community anything for very long at all, but it's amazing how much changes so fast too. Like a lot of the people I saw, they're gone now and new people have popped up that are big time. And yeah, it's a, it's a constant rotation. It's, it's, it's hard to keep track of everybody. I bet. I can't imagine from your position trying to do the podcast and yeah, that's a lot to, okay, <laughs> but, so I guess you got somebody, real life too. I got somebody right now who, uh, this guy sent me a bunch of stuff. He made a bunch of lids for LC. He made these little, um, he bought a sterilizer. I I'm almost certain. Um, and he made this little like block that you could tape to the sterilizer that had a magnet on it. So you could set your, um, scalpels on there. Hmm. He sent me three of those. He's just sent me a bunch of the stuff. And, uh, I was like, oh, that's cool, man. Uh, I'm like, I can't use three of these. I only have one, you know, I have, right. I have the first sterilizer I have ever built still, still use the same one. Right. I was like, so can I use these for a giveaway? He's like, yeah, sure. This was, and of course I just didn't get to it. I didn't, it was in my two processed bin and it just sat there right. forever. Now I don't remember who it was oh. <laughs> and scrolling back. Maybe he'll watch this and hit you back. That's uh, I'm just, I'm literally just hoping he will hit me up tomorrow and, and and we can we can get the sort yeah i don't want to i don't want to run that giveaway and not credit him yeah not be able to give him credit yeah and i don't want to run it and be like i forgot who gave me this stuff yeah. so um hopefully we'll we'll figure it out because going scrolling through all those messages oh my god i'm just getting exhausted just thinking about it so it's a lot of people to keep track of it's only going to get worse people are just flooding in by the day and so yeah. this is why doing this podcast is all the more important. It just becomes a chronicle of the history of, of the, the people I see doing different stuff at different times. And, you know, in five years from now, 
when we're doing another episode, you can be like, God, do you remember that first episode? And yeah, so they're, they're, we're building a little history here. That's, that's part of it. Yeah, definitely. It's a, yeah, I think that's interesting. It's, you've had a lot of good people on there too. I mean, and, and just all kind of different facets too. That's what I like. It's not, I like the cultivation stuff, you know, primarily cause that's what I was interested. That's how I got to know you and all that. But man, I like all the other stuff too. I know some people are like, oh, you should, they want to dictate what you can have on there and all that. And I think that's silly, but I like all the different content. I don't, I'm not interested in every show you have. I mean, sometimes it's like, okay, that's right. over my head or, you know, it's in a different angle or whatever, but it's still interesting. And I don't know, I think it's great that somebody's promoting the community as a whole and not just one little aspect of it. That's it. That's what it is right there. And, and everybody deserves representation, right? Like if, if you're a native American grower and you're watching the show, you're, and you're sitting there going, when the hell is geeky going to have a native on? Yeah. Right? When, when, if you're a Japanese American and you're like, when the hell is, cause everybody wants to see their people represented, yeah, especially yeah. if they know they're there. So, you know, try to have women on, try to have people of color on, try to just have people who grow in unorthodox ways that really ruffle yeah. feathers, you know, in certain circles, trying to have all different people on new growers, experienced growers, veteran growers, pro growers trying to have all you know had dennis mckenna on one of the original growers yeah just trying yep. to have a bunch of different people on yeah i was amazed that you were able to get him that was a big catch i would think took a while yeah i bet i, I was i was impressed i gotta give you that one i was i was like damn we got him on <laughs> that's it get, yeah that was doing rachel harris helped rachel harris yeah. um uh and that was the first one i did the three camera shoot on um, so I had this like a little more polished looking product. And, um, when I finally approached one of his team and, and used that as a reference and, and apparently he knew of her and, uh, you know, fi it finally yeah, worked out. So. Yeah. And the more people you have on here like that, then obviously I would think the easier it's going to be to get the next right. guy too, because then you can say, Hey, this guy was on and he's super credible and respected yeah. and I didn't embarrass him. It didn't, you know, he had a good time and yeah, I think. Yeah. Hopefully. Dennis and I had a great time. That was a blast. I, I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Yeah, it was a good yeah, show. Was good. Yeah. Um, got a couple other heavy hitters coming up. Um, not going to let the cat out of the bag cause I don't have them in the can yet. So right. <laughs> I don't want to drinks anything. But right. Yeah. You'll be careful. Should, should be good. So. Yeah. I think you got a bright future. Everything's, I mean, it's, just I, don't, I don't think this community is going anywhere. It's just going to get nope. bigger and bigger and more and more interest. And exactly. you know, there's, you're on the ground floor. So I'm just starting, man. Barely a year in. I'm just just don't give up. Dude. Keep it up because people like it. I like it. Yeah. It's, I think we need more of it, more content and more, you know, the more people get interested in it, the more and people don't want to see about it. And, yeah. Sharing the stories. Like I'll have people message me and go, Hey man, uh, so glad you had so-and-so on, you know, I reached out to them after seeing them on the show and we're friends now and we've exchanged this and we're working on this project now. And I'm like, and that's what it's all about right there. Yeah. That's, that's Most what we're trying people to I've met and people I saw on your show. Like I said, I was, you know, I was watching videos and buying syringes off Sporeworks because that was the only people I knew about from back in the shrimpery days. I started watching your show and I was like, what, wait, what? You can get liquid cultures. What plates? <laughs> what? what I can get. Okay. That's a whole nother, like, how do I get in touch with these people? So I got me a notebook and started rewatching episodes and Very figuring good. out who was who and who to contact. And then it opened up a whole new world to me that yeah. just without YouTube and you and all of that, I, you know, I'd probably still be shooting sports or I'd probably have given up out of depression, <laughs> but you know, and now you're, now you're doing it. Now you're, yeah. Really and I'm not and depressed you. anymore. It's, yeah, it's I don't know. It's crazy, it's dude. And it's been a miracle in a lot of ways for me really now, has. I tried everything. I mean, I tried everything for my depression before this. And I mean, everything like up to electroshock therapy. I'm talking about, I was depressed. I would have done anything. And it's man, I'm, I don't know. It's, I can't even, when I look back at those days now, it's weird. I, I, I don't, it just resets your mind. I don't, I still have days that I struggle and my mind goes back to its default, but I can see it now. And I go, Oh shit, it's about time to take some more mushrooms. Right. You know, I'm starting to fall back into those old thought patterns. 
So it's, and, it's been an amazing journey for me. And, and it's a living thing, right? There's always work to be done. There's always low work to be done. Yeah. My wife, it drives her crazy because she'll be like, why did you sneak down there for, for 30 minutes? And I'm like, because cause I just needed to do 30 minutes worth of work. Yeah. So I just want to sneak down there and do it. And having that purpose, having that, you know, man, if you let your plates go, whew, like, yeah, yep. you, you can blow by some stuff. I was just talking to um, Mac Reddy tonight about uh, a fellow cultivator who had this amazing cultigen and uh, got busy and kind of lost it. And yeah, I'm worried about that. I saw the this picture I have going. <laughs> and I said, this thing is ridiculous. And he let this go. Huh? I'm like, God dang it. I'm yeah. like, okay, so now we got, we're going to get it back. We got to figure out how to get it back. I worry about that. I've got so many collagens now. And I mean, I've got back, I've got my plates that are sitting, you know, out here in open air that, you know, I mean, I usually, even as manky as they get, I can usually resurrect them that I've got. So now what I'm doing, I have those. Um, every time I sub something, I try to send one, a, a sample of it to a, a long toward a water storage tube. I've also got, and then when I get fresh plates that look, I, I make two plates every time I make a plate because two is one, one is none. It's a waste of plates, I know, but I like it. You know, when I do a transfer session and one of them has a little funk on it, I can just throw that one out. I got the other one. It's clean. So, so, but often I have the backups. So those go in a culture fridge. So I got backups to backups to my backups. I hope I'm not losing stuff, but Man, there are things I haven't run in a while, and I don't know they're buried in that fridge or on these shelves somewhere. Right. But it's been a minute, so I I need to Maybe go into Colorado. Do- It'll be a good chance to re go through everything and make sure I've got store backups got, of everything. And got to buy yeah. more refrigerators. Yeah, more refrigerators and more more cryo valves or whatever the the yeah. storage tubes and yeah. All Man, I tell you what, my my new approach. Um, I used to do the wood slant tubes. I used to do this. Right. I, I did Ed's water storage and all that. And I do that for a few things, but I got this new hang loose attitude of man. We're not going to run out of cultigens. No, that's true. It's going to be so much stuff. Now the crosses and stuff, I get that though. You know, those are like your babies type of thing. But, and every once in a while, um, like for example, I'm trying to resurrect um dirty south's original stormtroopers he re-ran right. them and and they were looking a little different but i really wanted to to right so I, I, I had to contact one of my uh buddies who always gets a bunch of my my spore swabs he's kind of my backup redundancy speaking of like right. redundancies and he was like oh yeah i got an old swab set you sent me send it to me the first swab i ran everything contamined which i'm like dang I never had anybody in two years tell me that I sent them a, a contaminated swab and the first contaminated yeah, swab of mine I hear own. about is my own <laughs> that I'm running. God uh, dang it. Yeah, so that's frustrating. I, I gotta do I gotta figure out a trick to hopefully make this other swab work. But so every once in a while you feel like you miss something, but man, for everything that you think you lost. There is an infinite oh, amount of things, stuff yeah. waiting to happen, so it's all good. Yeah, I've got, uh, speaking of Dirty South, I've got his Fatty Jack. I think I got Gandalf he gave me and Tidal Wave, too, if you want those cuts. I've still got them somewhere. I'd be happy. I know you were good friends with him. Oh, I yeah. bought some stuff from him after I saw him on your show, so yeah. I have a few of his things. I didn't have a lot, but you're welcome to him if you're interested. Oh, man. He, um... A lot of people are doing that right now. They're they're trying to you know, grow some stuff, give away swabs, do kind of kind of spread his genetics around. I think that's a great anybody that's yeah. that's sitting on any of his stuff, just grow one thing, do 20, 30 swabs, just give them away. Just you yeah. know, get them somewhere. Just get them up. Even if you just give them to somebody like Nikki Maiko and say, Hey Nikki, I'm gonna send you these 30 swabs, just you know, give them away to the next 30 orders or something like that. Just, right. You know, yeah, some, get somehow them get, get them out there. I, th- I yeah, think that's keep cool. his name going. Oh, yeah, I think that's cool. He's gonna be around a long time. Now, of course, in five years, who knows if any you know, right now you got all the old heads are crying because there's too many newbies showing up and and you yeah. know, stuff. 
But imagine how it's going to be in five years. It's going to be so much worse. Yeah. Yeah, it's it not really going to get smaller. It's not getting smaller. No. All you can do is just keep doing what you do really well. Yep. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, that's not, I mean, that's the thing I would say. I know people, a lot of people get mad at the newbies, and I can't say anything. I'm a newbie, so I get it. But, you know, I mean, I don't see any point in that. Just, you know. Keep, if you've been around for a long time and you're already known, man, just keep doing what you're doing. I don't think any newbie's going to take your thing away from you. You know, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know. But everybody's, obviously, I am pro newbie because I am one and I want to do my own thing and I want to be a part of the community. I don't want to be excluded. So right. I don't want to exclude anybody else. And hopefully in five years, I won't be the guy going, ah, these new guys, you know, hopefully I'll be encouraging them. That's my. That's my hope. I want to encourage more and more and more people to do what we're doing because I don't know. I think there's a lot. That's to how offer I see it. it. I, we want <clears throat> we want this community to be more impressive. We want it to yeah. be stronger. We want it exactly. to be more intelligent. We want it to be figuring more things out. Yep. Exactly. And that doesn't happen by relying on the same five people who, you know, were the first to the sandbox and had all the sand to play with. That's not how it's going to work. That's clearly. No, and I don't think working. it benefits you in the long run anyway. When you keep all those gates and you, I mean, you end up with what we had before and I'm nothing against Workman or any of that, but, you know, there's maybe one, or, if, if there's only one or two people, it only works in a small right. community. There can't be a big community because you can't feed everybody. And yeah, you may have it hemmed up and you may be the only See, thing, but. If you let the community grow and other people in, there's still going to be more people that want your stuff. You just hit on the, the you made the exact point. Back in the day, you could be. You yeah. could be the guy. Yep. Too many people now. You can't yeah. be the guy. And with, yeah, with so, the internet. And so we got the and old it. mentality in, in a new environment. So you got these people like, Oh, if, you know, if, if he takes that and, and sells it, it's like with the sterilizers, dude. I mean, do you know how many people build sterilizers now? No, I'm sure there's a few. Everybody. Do you know how many people build them consistently? Not many. Yeah, probably not Because it many. ain't that fun. No. So if all you're doing is just do what you do and do it consistently well, you're already standing out. Yeah. You just keep doing it. I mean, I respect yeah. anybody that has that longevity. You're still doing it? Great. Yep. Just yeah, I agree. I mean, I think the way to succeed is to stand on your own work and, you know, grow because of what you're doing and just, you know, let your work speak for itself. If you have to, if, if you think that the way you're going to get to the top is by climbing on top of the dead bodies, of all the people you're cutting down on the way, I, man, you're not going to get anywhere. If you bring everybody else down so that you can be at the top, you're not at the top. You're just, you're just bringing everybody else down with you. It's like, just, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah. if, if I think sadly, yeah, the just, way the world the work. works is some of these pieces of crap, it works out for them. It does. People, people learn, people know how to manipulate other people. And then I people mean, that don't, people that only care about the money and don't care about the mushrooms, they're going to be good at getting your money. And they're going to be real you're good be at it. Flashy and slick and having yep. all the bells and whistles and packaging and yep. marketing and, yep. But, and I guess the people there's customers for those people. People like that stuff. People so, want it. It's just so. like with music. When I was in a band, you, you know, it's easy to go, ah, oh, nobody, you know, they left the dance floor when we played this song and they don't get it. And we might like it. Yeah. But we made it. Of course we like it. It's like if you give birth to an ugly kid, you're still going to love it and think it's beautiful, but it's not. It's, you gave birth to an ugly kid. Yeah, sometimes you just have to accept reality. You gotta listen I'm sure to it'll be happening with my mushrooms. I'll probably have crosses that I love that just right. people don't care about. Right. And exactly. those are, oh well, move on to the next one. Yep. Can't, so, can't. Yeah, it's it's that way with these episodes. There are a couple, two or three of my absolute favorite episodes I've ever done are some of the poorest performing ones. Hmm. Isn't it funny how that works? And I bet I, I bet you some of the them. ones that you weren't that crazy about are some of your most popular too. It seems like it always works that way. Yeah, not, I mean, the Dave Wombat one was huge. That was epic. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, he's that was a good such show. a great guest. Um, yeah, he's a great, grower, he's a great guest. Um, the Swab Gods episode, I mean, that was supposed to be one hour. We 
had the time of our lives that night. I mean, the next yeah, that day, was people fun were episode, like, God, just that it, episode was yeah. fun as hell. That was one of my favorite episodes, just not necessarily because of the marketing or whatever, but just because it was a, it was the people who don't know me, my friends that fun, don't know man. me. I was hanging out with them, listening to y'all yeah, hang out. It was and, just fun. Yeah, it was real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, yeah, exactly. It seemed genuine and I, I don't know. It was yeah. interesting. I, I enjoyed that show a lot. Yeah, the ones that did really well, I mean, I feel like for the most part didn't surprise me that they did really well. I knew they were known people. We had a really good time. It, it's the ones where I really thought like, oh, this person, like getting to interview them meant a lot to me. Surely that will translate and people will love it. Nah, it, 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 it didn't, but that's okay. It's all good. Yeah, I guess you. I'm going to keep doing the integration stuff. I know they don't go over nearly as well as as the cultivation stuff, but I feel like this is important stuff. There are people watching this who are getting the medicine figured out. They're figuring out how to grow. They're getting the fruit, and they got a lot of shit to work through. And then they're going, okay. I mean, I'm getting somewhere, but I, I, I need. To yeah, I think integration stuff. therapy needs to be more available. That that would be my one complaint with. Or, what, you know, so I suspect if I hadn't already been through a long lifetime of dealing with psychiatrists and psychologists and all that, would have been a different ball game for me doing the medicine on my own. Right. So, I mean, I already kind of knew how to use You're it. You're like therapy. an honorary psychologist anyway. I mean, the right. longer I've been in therapy, the more I'm just like. like, it's like when you go to church, you know, by year 10, you're like, oh, that sermon again. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm either going to do it or I'm not. I'm probably not going to. Right. So, but I did yeah. find it frustrating with the when I so my psychiatrist, you know, she didn't have any problem with me doing them. She actually uh, uh, suggested it yeah. and and all that. But and she's willing to talk to me as far as like when I if I have, but she's not going to sit with me during an experience. I can't, right. you know, that's not realistic. I can go afterwards and I can tell her about it. And but that's really not her. She's a psychiatrist. She wants to know about how the chemical works on the mind and that kind of stuff. But so it would be nice if there was more. Same with the ketamine. When I did the, um, they actually have a ketamine uh, therapy place here, but it's, it's basically an administration place. They'll, right. you go and there's a trained nurse practitioner. They give you the dosages all safe, very safe environment. All that is great. It's very comforting in that way. But there's no integration therapy. When I asked her about that, she wants to, but she's got to go through the licensing and the training, and and that, that's needed too. I get that, but it will be nice. We're getting, we're getting there. It, it's started. Yeah, it's happening. Yeah. That's specifically what the uh, when Dr. Rick was on here recently, we were just talking about this article or this uh, paper that's all about how the community, the psychiatric community, is finally going. Oh yeah, we better we better figure this out. Because <clears throat> this is yeah, it, this is becoming something we can't ignore any longer. So yeah, they'd be foolish too. I mean, from my personal experience, and I'm not everybody or anything else, but I literally tried everything they offered me. Right. I mean, and and you know, whatever. It, it, you would have these periods where it felt like it was working, and then and then the side effects and everything else. Oh and my God, I know. this is just so much better and so much more effective. And you don't have to take it every day. You don't have to go through withdrawal when you quit it. You yeah, it's, so I think that it's impossible for him not. I think I think she's excited about it, um, and most of awesome. most of the psychiatrists I've talked to are. It's just getting past the federal legalization hurdles and all that. We're getting there. It's happening. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Yeah, I don't see it stopping now. I think that there's too much, uh, too much research, too much factual data out there. It's too hard for the the antis or whatever to really yeah. poo poo it at this point. There's no reason to stop it. It's too much good and not not much bad. I think we're 10 to 12 years away. Absolutely no longer nothing to worry about. Fully federally legal. Um, yeah, I'd love so. it to happen sooner than that, but I think we got two or three presidential cycles to get through. And um, we'll Yeah, the world's got a lot of problems to worry about, I guess, besides that right now. But at least there are places you can do it. And I think for the most part, if you're not doing something stupid and just slinging huge sacks to people and whatever, right. I don't think anybody cares. I don't, I don't have any, they got, I have I, a, man, they got so much to worry about. Yeah. Right now. There's, there's so many more. Way you had to be doing something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool, man. Well, now, and I know you're talking about moving to uh, Denver. Uh, actually, to Pueblo because it's affordable. So I'll be close okay. to Denver, about an hour, hour and a half okay. to Denver, cool. just south of the Springs. Just just move there to get my foot in the door, finances wise, affordable right. as far as buying a house and be able to move with, without a job or any right. way to support myself and all that. So um, that's my idea. Get my foot in the door, figure out if I can be a part of the community. If I, I mean, I, I love growing mushrooms. I don't have any problem with that. They're transitioning to trying to vend or find a way to support myself doing it. That's going to be a new right. hurdle, but there it's legal. I can do that without too much fear. And exactly. yeah, I want to try that. I mean, I'm not officially a vendor yet or whatever. I'm willing to help people with, if, if you want to hit me on Facebook or plates or something like that, I don't have a problem with it. Um, but that's my goal eventually to try to try to nice. do, to have the dream, man. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to do the thing they love and, and be able to support themselves doing it? If I can find some way I to hear do that, you. I then, hear you. then I'm all for it. And I'm not going to be ashamed of that. I know some people find it distasteful if you make your living doing this or whatever, but. I'm not going to be Sammy spammy. I'm not going to try to rip anybody off. I'm not going to do anything unethical or immoral. Right. So I hope that I can find some way to do any, any part of it, some way to find some way to do this and, and be happy and make a living. It's got to do the work. So you that's where I'm at now is doing the work to and figure out how to do it without doing the work. And that's no, nah, yeah, I'm not, I don't want that. I want to, I'm that's why I'm not rolling anything out yet or saying, Hey, I'm a vendor. Come hit me up. Cause that's, that's not where I'm at. I'm trying to have something of my well, own that is unique you're... and my own value. Yes. And now I've got too yes. much going on. I'm, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm in the process of getting there. I don't, I don't want to be the next Insta vendor. I'm, I'm not trying to be the guy with a thousand things on a menu that's somebody else's stuff or whatever. I want right. to. Yeah, you're just like I me. Want to do it right. I, I'm the same way. People go, why don't you sell this? Why don't you sell that? I'm like, someday I, I'm pretty sure I will. But yeah, I want to, exactly. when I do it, it's going to be real big. It's going to be justified. No one's going to have much to say about it other than thank God. And isn't this great? That's my uh, goal. Uh, I just, I want to, yeah. I want to make sure that all my T's are crossed and I's are dotted and then I'm doing it right. And then I'm, yeah. you know, because I am, I haven't been doing it forever. Right. I mean, obviously I'm having some success. I'm not embarrassed about where I'm at, but but yeah, I mean, I, I got time. I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to, there's no hurry. I don't it's need to, I don't need to rule the world tomorrow or anything. I got, I got, I'm just having fun doing what I'm doing. That's all. That's what all, it's all about, about, dude. That's what yeah. it's all about. I was that's so far from that a few on. months ago. Yeah. That's why you're here because yeah. you love it. Yeah. That's so. probably why James likes you too. Same reason. He's been, yeah. He's been really nice to me. He's been very encouraging. And there have been times he's one of those people that when I get, that I can go to when I'm like, man, I don't know. This is, I don't know how to keep everybody happy. And I'm like, uh, uh, and he's like, nah, just, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. And, and right. it, it's, yeah. I yeah. know exactly what words James is using when you say that. <laughs> yeah. He's a good dude. He's been real. Yeah. And a lot of people have Brock's been very helpful and Ed and you, and, yeah. and there's been a lot of people. It's, uh, I don't know. It's been surprising, dude. It's a whole, like I said, I mean, I'm happy for the first time in years. So I just hope I can keep it going. Great. Right. Yeah, man, you're gonna. I already know it. It's all nothing to worry about. You've no, uh, no, I'm, I'm, cer certain things can happen in your life, and then it's just different. Yeah, it's definitely different now. So yeah, I, cool, man. It's been great. I love it. Well, I am so glad uh, you decided to come on. I'm glad you had me, dude. I was surprised you asked. Really, I was like, man. What? I know you think I'm being humble or whatever, but it's not. I don't. You don't know, really. I mean, I don't know. I mean, people like my stuff and. I talk to people and all that, but I don't know the idea that I was so far from ever thinking I could be a success at anything that this is all sure. new to me to, to have people interested in what I'm doing. It's really cool though. I like it. It's great. Do the work people. It speaks for itself. It's that easy. You could, you could literally watch this show, go off in a corner, perfect your craft in secret invent five new amazing crosses hit the market out of nowhere and then just go oh yeah i've been here the whole time like you could do like a lurker slash wizard of oz whatever you right. want to call it right it doesn't matter how you do it the best way is just to integrate into the community as soon as you can be a real person you know respect people's time ask questions want to get better 
And if you're doing all that stuff and you're, you, you, you listen to advice, you try it out, you see if it works for you. Um, everybody loves those people because there are not a lot of those people. Yeah, I'm sure you're true. already seeing it. I'm sure people yeah, ask there's... you now, yeah, and and you see yeah. how many flakes there are. So yeah, yeah, there's some crazy do. stuff going on out there. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, until next time, uh, cannot wait to see uh, some of the new crosses. Can't wait to see some of the F2, F3, F8. F8. Yeah, it should be more and more of that stuff coming. So exactly yep yeah, all right man i don't see me stopping but i really appreciate you having me on i want to thank you for that and oh, you're yeah welcome. it's just been amazing dude i hope we it's been nice talking to you outside yeah. the show and all that and it's it's, yeah. nice. it's great to have friends in this community it's been really well, cool. well when, when you get to colorado uh let me know we can do a little check-in i think that's a yeah. cool story to tell you know move to move to colorado to try to make it happen i i think there's a handful of people looking to do that. And so here, hearing what, what that journey is like is probably worth talking about. Yeah. I'll keep you posted. I'm sure we'll be in touch. Cool, man. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good night. Yeah, you too, man. It was good seeing everybody and we'll see y'all around. All right, guys, that was the one and only dichotomous keys. Hope you enjoyed uh, getting to know him. Uh, I, I have enjoyed getting to know him, uh, over maybe about the last year and, uh, finally had him on. I, I really hope there's a lot of new people out there, uh, who may be struggling to figure out how to find your place in the community. I hope getting to hear his story, uh, maybe gives you some ideas. If you got any questions, drop those in the comment section below. If, uh, you know, you want to hit him up on uh, Facebook, go for it, hit him up. I bet he'll respond to you. It's that easy. Um, Anyway, tune in next week. Uh, we got got another great show. Uh, just want to let everybody know, uh, going to be doing my best through the holidays here to to keep the episodes coming. There's a chance from time to time, based on uh, the hectic holiday schedule that I'm maintaining over here, uh, might not always get an episode out, but we'll do our best. Um, so hope hope everybody is. You know, Thanksgiving went well. I hope you guys are shifting gears, and, and don't forget that the most important part about the holidays is uh, just spending time with people that you love. All right, so until next time, go grow some mushrooms.